Pies for joining us there on this beautiful Tuesday. My name is Sam Fish. I'm Jake Ryan, and today we've got a lot of high caliber players. Some of them you may have heard of, most notably Doza, Rogue Yoshi, and then a couple of heavy hitters from the bracket that we're going to see in the names of Super Hot Garbage, who's looking pretty, pretty, like sitting pretty in the winner's side, and names like Timo and also ASAP Ricky from the East Coast. Who are you excited to see in this bracket right now, Sammy? You know, throwing through the names real quick, I really like Monkey Madness. I think his team is pretty cool. Okay. And it's a little bit unconventional, so I'm looking forward to seeing that one, uh, as well as um, Mill. Mill, yeah. Mill. I'm pretty stoked to see Mill in just a second. So we're going to get you both of those games in a second. We're going to run through the top eight, see who's going to take this Dragon Radar event. And then obviously in the end, the winner of the event is going to be able to get flown out to one of the Saga events of his choice. Yeah, and that Saga event enables an individual to have a chance at a Dragon Ball. And what that Dragon Ball lets you do is it enters you into that final tournament where you get to face the likes of Sonic Fox. Kazunoko, he's got two balls now. Got two now. He's got two Dragon, Dragon Balls, balls and, and he, he wants, wants to take, to take more, more. So, so you, you kind of have, have to take, have to take out, out that man if you want to go. go. And, and others, others like Quick like Game God, God and potential, potential faces, faces like Super like Noon, hopefully. hopefully. That's our Star Scout. You know, you yeah. got to root, root for them. Of course, of course, of course. Of course. You know, we, we still got more Saga Saga events to go. There's yeah. a lot of, a lot more Dragon Ball to be had in the next coming months. I'm looking forward to it, honestly, as we yeah. wind down to the finals. It is, um, you know, maybe not surprisingly because of how how consistent these players are. Yeah. But it seems like everybody who's earning a Dragon Ball is, is deserving of it or somebody we are expecting to win that yeah. tournament, right? Yeah, they're in that uh, upper echelon of players. Exactly. You, you typically, exactly. your Kazunokos, your Goichis, your, your Dogros. Dogro doesn't have one yet, so he's still a potential to get the Dragon Balls. Your Mokes, everything like that. But in our first match, we have someone who's trying to face off against them in a potential victory for King Deska for It's a Good Day, but Super Hot Garbage and Rogue Yoshi are the real names, and the Dragon Rush opens up strong. Rogue Yoshi. Yeah, one of the cool things about Super Hot Garbage's team is that actually this was one of the teams that was originally thought to be pretty strong because of the Nappa Kid Boo mix, right? Kid Boo assist helping Nappa out of his mix-ups, and then comparison with the uh, with Cybermen was going to be really good. And you but know, we're not going to see that. Today. Yeah, this is actually surprising to me because I originally knew of Rogue Yoshi as the Nappa player. I'm right. not 100% sure if these names aren't swapped, but um, there it was. Okay, so Rogue Yoshi was the one who was eliminated. I was like, this is a little weird that uh, Rogue Yoshi's playing Ginyu here, and Super Hot Garbage immediately punishing Rogue Yoshi and the cheeky stuff. Gonna go for the reset with the Dragon Rush. All right, top down. This is where you get started. You got the Go Took assist. That's all you need, Kid Boo. Nice. Deflecting the tag. Gets him out of that corner situation. Oh, the side switch crosses himself up. But Goldo got a couple rocks. Let's just reset this neutral. Call in the hums. Oh, tried his best to combo off all of that. Go go. Ooh, there you go. Great. Go tanks call. Oh, man, that assist is so good against Ginyu in particular because he's just stuck in the air. And hey, Donut's not going anywhere. You aren't either. Out of vantage. going to try to keep him in the corner here. He's that go tanks assist. Here. Ooh, the S fireball after the reflect out or after the uh, super dash. That was very smart from him. Hot garbage right there. Sometimes you just gotta call him out for not going for the 2H. And immediately able to get that punish. And Rogue Yoshi put just on Go Tanks here. Super hot garbage coming off. Yeah, and sub 100 seconds as well. I mean, he's just rushing him down. He's not giving him a chance to set up anything. This game is a bloodbath. Oh, and the oh, reflect! The reflect in the corner. That's gonna be a full combo. I think he. That was so sick, that extension. I think he has to spark here, but he's not gonna get the opportunity. This is gonna be a dead Rogue Yoshi. He's got spark in his he wants to use it. Level one. Double game. He's been the juice. Ooh. Go garbage. Taking the first one. Looking pretty clean, if I do say so myself. It's called garbage can, not garbage can't, baby. It's called that garbage can. really impressive. Like, Rogue Yoshi is known to be one of those top consistent players that'll yeah. get top 32 at tournaments, that shows up at big events like Evo, shows up at his at these events, and now Super Hot Garbage, I've never heard of the guy before 
takes a clean round off of Rogue Yoshi, and there's going to need to be some adaptations there if we want to see uh, Rogue Yoshi come out. And especially keeping that Nap alive is what I think the first step is. Yeah, so we were saying before, I was attributing it to Garbage, but I meant to Rogue Yoshi. Yeah. That that Nappa Kid Boo team was so good it's early on, and we thought it was going to be really good because of the combined lockdown that both uh, characters can have together. Yeah. However, we do kind of need to get started first to, in order to do that. And I think that might be one of the problems with this team is that really Nappa kind of struggles in the neutral, even still to this uh, to this day. Yeah. With all the buffs that he got were mostly mix-up buffs, right? Yeah. So he still has to be able to get in, and um, a lot of the assist pressure that Rogue Yoshi has is to stay on top of somebody. It doesn't really get you in on top of them. So Nappa still suffering some, some, some of the glaring issues he had before, and why he planted? Yeah, he might, might be an input here, honestly, but one way or another, he's still needing this damage right here. Here are three bars, so he's not to spend it just yet. Okay, finally gets a turn to play, but the oh! is pulled out! No! It oh, is not no! your turn, sir! It is not your turn! You cannot stagger on this man. Super Hot Garbage already playing like a wild animal. Of course he's gonna level three. Why are you staggering? Man, that is a terrible feeling, honestly. To be to like finally get a chance to press buttons, you get a level three in your face. See you later, Nappa. It's not your turn, sir. You don't get to play. This is my Dragon Ball game. Finally gets out. All right, let's see what Rogue Yoshi can do. And the guard cancel into the vanish. Get a little bit of extra damage and now corner position as well. Why are you mad? Yeah, I was gonna say the, the first set might have been okay, I mean, trying to get out of the corner, but the second hit's gonna be the death. And now Rogue Yoshi is gonna even this out, take out the kid who. No, he doesn't have another character in his Oh man, he's able to get that character out. Kid Boot not gonna recover some blue life. That's a oh, huge what? loss. <gasps> Wasn't able to cannot combo both of them, but he finishes it off with the H. Gets the combo, he's gonna tag him out. That little bit of blue health is gonna be so important here too, because while Sparking is still on deck, the health management from Super Hot Garbage is great so far, and taking it away from Yoshi is gonna be the way he's gonna win. Yeah, the main thing from this whole situation is that Kid Boo's been able to recover all that blue life on the side of Garbage, right? And that means he's basically got a full combo's health left in that character. Keeps him alive for another oh! There we go. And goes for the mix-up right here with the eraser gun. Nice! Man, this has just been a 30-second scramble from the both of them. Someone trying to find a clean hit. It's going to go to Yoshi. Going to use the cross-up super dash and then get the corner position. Yeah, and I feel super hot thrives in that position because calling the Ginyu Force allows him to scramble and press those risky buttons because, hey, my friends are going to come back me up. And now it pays off for Rogue Yoshi. He's got to open him up here. He gets out one more time. Great back to guard. First time we've seen the Vegeta on point two. So let's see how this works out. Let's just start with the chop. That is a confident button press right there. All right, down H. Yep. Oh, two. Slow on the conversion. Doesn't matter. This man's a guy. Doesn't matter. Rogue Yoshi, man, on his last legs. No sparking. Has to go through three characters. Is this lights out? The garbage has come prepared. Missed the final part of that combo, but he's in such a healthy position. I mean, at this point, you could just grind out the last part of it. It takes something special. For Yoshi, but it ain't gonna happen right now. Super hot garbage taking a clean 2 0 over Rogue Yoshi. The first time he got to press buttons, he woke up level 3. Don't stagger him. That is, that is one of the most heartbreaking things I think I've seen in Dragon Ball. And it's just because you, you get one of those games where you just don't get to press a button, right? It happens to the best of us. We've all been playing, and, and you know, you go, well, you know, that's a round. I don't get to play. Let me get the next one. And as soon as you get the chance to start playing, you eat a level three in your face. And it killed him immediately, too, because the scaling was insane. He was already at a low enough health where it seemed like a pretty good option. And Rogue Yoshi had all the assists on deck. There was no reason that he should have gone for a stagger there, but he was being greedy. The greed pay like the greed punished him in the end and now paying off for super hot garbage clean 2-0 i will have to say though uh for garbage specifically one of the things that i did like is that he constantly created the scramble yeah the thing that i would say is one of the strengths of yoshi's team is that he is a very setup it's a very setup heavy team right if you never get a clean hit into a knockdown there's n i have nothing to be afraid of really you know i mean kid boo's got pretty good neutral uh, Gotenks is pretty good out there, but it really all wanted to start with the Nappa, and that's something yeah. that never got started. Constantly creating scrambles, constantly creating this big old, uh, you know, mess 
of a screen, it never gave him the chance to get started. Yeah, and I feel like that's why Super Hot Garbage was able to close it out. And the character Ginyu allows him to shut down that neutral even it's further true. because yep. Nappa can't get in, and then you put even more characters on the screen, you're done. And now we have the match that you were excited about, uh, yeah. Monkey Madness's team, and Doza actually not playing Team Goku anymore. Yeah, switching uh, to a Bardock, in there. a Bardock in there. And you know what? I'm not going to blame him one mm. bit for that one. But we're going to get into this one. Yeah, I really like uh, Monkey Madness's team. This is a, a little bit of deviant from uh, Hook Gang God's team, which you normally see the Vegeta on anchor. But Tien, not a slouch in his own right. We'll see how that change plays out. Yeah, Tien typically will use a ton of damage into the team. And if Doja extends this properly, this is going to be a dead cell. Oh, oh this is the last bar, but drops the axe handles on the top of the dome. Doza will definitely take that. Saves the bar on top of it. Definitely uh, the greedy plan right there. Dude, if he comboed off that with the Bardock assist, I would have lost my mind. That was such a great idea. But Monkey Mathis is going to flip the switch. Oh, my God. There you go, trying to use the parry, getting out of the corner. Those sword normals meeting Doza in the air. But he wasn't able to get the knockdown. Nice demon elbow to switch sides. On to Doza, drop him down. And now we got a hell zone set up. Block this? Oh, oh my god, how did he block it? But he wasn't ready for the command grab, using the Tien assist to combo off it as well. Cannot reflect those. This is where Piccolo shines. Oh, I like that. Really good awareness in that. Should dead miss the green. Now, one of the great things about Blue Goku's key assist, uh, key blast, is that it doesn't stop him in the air. It doesn't stop his momentum for a second, so it's really hard to recognize what's going to happen afterwards. Unlike regular Goku, or uh, sorry, now Super, Super Saiyan Goku, who makes it much more difficult, or much easier to recognize if he's going to go for a mix-up or not. Yeah, he shares that same kind of strength with Gojinx, and that's one of the main, like that's one of the best parts about Goku Blue. Like his key blast is so dang his good. His key blast is really great angle. Look at that! How fast that happens! How it's so hard to recognize when that mix-up is gonna happen. You have to be able to re react to that before it happens. I got hit. I got hit. That's what I'm saying, man. That's dirty. If that was if that was his blonde counterpart, he would have been able to at least react to the side uh, to the side switch. But in that situation, it's so hard. It happens so fast. Yeah. And in that in that situation too, Doza really showed his prowess on that blue Goku. We didn't even really get to see that much Bardock. It was the blue Goku show, and Funky Madness wasn't ready for the matchup. I mean, we usually we usually see Bardock as the you know the Revenger Assault character, right? But he has a great assist. Larry just covers so much range, has great hit stun on it for combos, very fast. Oh yeah. So definitely not a slouch from there. Ooh. Boom! My, my hero is Bruce Lee. I'm trying to get you into the mix. Do it again. Doza, the madman with the two and a punish. There you go. Going for the nice stuff. He's going to tag and get rid of that blue health. I mean, not a bad character to get rid of early here. If he finishes this combo, it's going to be done and dusted. That's so rough for Monkey Madness right there. Just uh, stuck under constant duress. This blue Goku with the beam and Bardock. I, mean, I play a very similar team. And it's rough. So much hit stun, so much pressure from this backup. You just, you have to respect him and you have to block him. Sometimes you're gonna get mixed. I mean, when you see the blue hair on the screen, you gotta expect to get rushed down. That's that's the, the design of all three of the blue characters, right? Go in. Go in and stay in. You never stop going in. All right, Revenger Assault. There we go, first one. It's my favorite movie. Let me see it. You're the one who's gonna pay. All right, got the 50-50 in the corner. He decides to spark. I like that decision from him. Yeah, he needs to keep this Piccolo alive if he wants a chance here. And oh, you jumping, boy! You cannot jump my Demon Shocker. And let him a level three. There we go. Oh, there you go. How many comebacks have we seen from a Piccolo with just an assist behind him, right? He just needs to get the chance to be able to run the game. He finds another hit and in sparking, too. Goodbye-bye, Bardock. Make it fancy. Man, oh. That, was, uh, that might have been overkill, but let's keep it safe. That's yeah. two to two on the character count. Doesn't want to drop, doesn't want to risk dropping it. Maybe miss him, but on the special beam cannon. Keep it simple, and that's the online stuff Woo! right there, baby. EX elbow, that's what I like to see. I like the up tech, though, from Monkey Madness. Not trying to get mixed on the high low. 
Back to the corner we go, Monkey Man is going to get another chance. And the big part about that, too, is he was able to keep Piccolo alive. Yes, very much so. He's going to recover a little bit of blue health. I was going to say, why didn't he just level one to level one? Does he not have confidence in his TM? That's definitely not the case. Look at this guy work. Oh, that was such a good empty vanish off the E Blast. Now, going to probably get a level three off this. Yes. But Oki's not that great off this one. Don't care. Thank you, Dozo, for picking this team. I love that level three. Oh, no. Not only a read, but a lost character. Madness on his last one. But if anybody who can do it is definitely the orbital cannon from the top row. Oh. I got one too, man. I brought my library card. I got reads. Oh, no. Chao Tzu. Oh, it's, it's not enough. No. It wasn't enough. Now if he loses, it's all for naught. Got to do it for Chao Tzu. Got to do it for Chao Tzu. Finds the hit. Going to snap in. I don't agree. Try to get a rid of that blue health. He is on one touch. And the double jump. Gets him out of the situation. No reason not to do it in that. No, nope, he doesn't have the tag in. He was still stuck from getting uh, snapped in. Um, I don't agree with that decision because even though now he's going to kill the blue Goku, there's no sparking on the side of Doza. If he would have killed Goku, he was in a much better advantageous position. Now he's got to get two hits instead of just one for the yeah. future. Uh, I mean, definitely questionable at the end. You can see the line of reasoning, though, gets sniped with a key blast from the air. That's going to be 2-0 to zero for Doza. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a hard point, right? Yeah. Because he had such little health that he wanted to get the tap to the kill. And he was like, I was so close to killing him. I was very, like, right there. You know, a pixel. And so he, I think he might have tunnel vision yeah. towards the end. You know, especially considering you may, may be thinking as a Tan player in his head, he's going like, all right, am I going to, you know, am I going to shoot the Kikoho at him and, you know, just waste another, waste some health, waste another bar, but secure the kill or maybe, you know, use that Chaotzu. Use the Chaotzu. It didn't pay off and maybe just maybe wanted that kill too badly. Yeah. And that's one of the things, too, like when you're playing Dragon Ball at this level, you need to avoid that tunnel vision mentality because... Character, character management is one of the biggest cornerstones of being successful in this game. And if you make a mistake like that, where the blue health swap is negligible and you trade out pressure for a potential tap, which got him opened up by the axe handles, you then lose. Yeah. One of the things I will also say, though, is that even if we recovered all that blue it's, health back, yeah. I believe you still would have been able one, one or hit. two touch. Yeah, like one, one good touch into a full combo, right? It would have still been a, a great situation for him. Nonetheless, it was a pretty good match. I liked both teams. Doza going to be moving on versus Garbage. But next up for you, we got the legendary Pred versus Mill. <laughs> Had to get a good smirk out of Sammy Fish. And we got double Gohan, baby. Yeah, it's I mean, Daddy's time. This is a, we went from a, a lot of really fun, interesting teams to uh, a lot of really pick a top tier team if I do say so myself. These are probably the two best teams to put behind Adult Gohan right now. I love the long leg lad. All his normals, they're just so long. I, I mean, I don't, I'm not complaining. I love this pair. Triple L, baby. Let Get me him. see it. Hard knockdown. Wake up, DP. You won't do it, Pred. Oh, yeah, he won't do it. <laughs> that reflect. He won't do it indeed. And it, he's going to be able to get the hit on Gotex. Is he going to tag? Oh, yeah. Give me that L. This is where it matters because that that is going to be a one touch now. And you got to respect my jump M. What are you doing? Yeah, and different in that situation. If you covered all of his blue health, it might have been a two touch situation instead of one. He gets rid of the character. Definitely a big bet on the tag. But it paid out. Yeah, he didn't respect him in the air after that. Oh, no conversion off the 16. A little bit awkward there on the, on the oh, way forward. It looked like he jumped with momentum on him. Yeah, maybe a super jump. Could have been, could have been. Gets the snap and want to get rid of the gold Gohan. Oh, that's so dirty. That's rough. Go tanks with Android 16. The hit stun on that, crazy good. And you just, it's high low, 50 50. Better guess. Seen assist, baby. All right, into the level three. <laughs> That's going to be pretty close, if not it. But either way, he's going to be in a good situation. Very good situation right here. Just goes with the close. Man, you didn't even see the, the explosion didn't fully disappear before he went for his mix-up. Yeah, the timing on that, too, is crazy. Because if you time it properly, you get a full combo off of that overhead. It's that's so awkward. dumb. That is mega that's, that's not fair. That's some dirt. He's a cheater. Definitely need, don't need to talk about fairness in this game. Oh, no. He, oh. Oh, he mixed himself. 
I was gonna say I am so happy that people are getting more or having better mix-ups with the ghost setups, but uh, didn't work out in that situation. Fred eating a lot of damage on the 16 for it. I love this elbow with those there. And now you gotta deal with the solar system power, baby. It's just because it's called the solar command man because it's powerful enough to destroy the solar system. He does not channel the power of the sun, <laughs> even though he is the mitochondria master. I appreciate I appreciate the lore right there. Because <laughs> definitely I was like, why is he why is he taking power from the sun? I don't remember that. No, no, no. no. It's, it's, it's called Solar Command Man, because he's just gonna blow everything up. He's just so perfect. Alright, spike him into the floor. That's it for Mill Cell. Legendary Pledge pulling it back after losing his adult Gohan first. Very impressive duo here from his GoTech 16. Yeah, I would say that Mill right there was the best volleyball in the world. He's a very well-rounded player. I would agree. Feeling, oh, okay, I like, I like this mix-up right here and extending the time to get him closer to the corner and utilize the 16. Great stuff, but you can't throw beams like uh, that! Yeah, and able to land and even get a punish on top of it, so he's gonna go for that level 3, spend that 3 bars, get the knockdown. No corner position, so the OG's gonna be a little bit awkward here. Yeah, maybe overextended almost. Yeah. Probably should have uh, tried to bait something out there. Van okay, Vanish happy. All right, Mill. I see you. Finds the hit. Gonna go into sparking. I like that quite a bit. That's a safe sparking. Might be able to kill if he gets enough bar, but it didn't happen right there. No! No! Gets the hit, but he is still in sparking. 21 seconds of that means he's gonna recover a bit of that health. I love the way that combo looks, how he just whips the command grab. He's like, I'm still here. I'm pretty, it's pretty we're, still, we're still playing. Oh, no. You gotta, you gotta recognize from those reflex that he's ready to 2 H. He knows what you're trying to do. And uh, the sparking is right there about to be ticking. And now, Mill, two, two touch, one touch for each of these characters. So it could go either way, and the 2 H is exactly how he's gonna want to start that. Now Mill's in the lead. Yeah, I was gonna say, he's not in a bad position anymore. Now in a lead, almost close to three bars. So it's gonna be even scary to throw out beams from full screen. No, you can't. And in this situation, one, one problem. There you go, finds the landing, and that is going to be it. Dang, Mill. A, a comeback within a comeback. Legendary Fred, after losing his first character's adult on, was able to take Mill to all the way to his last, to his anchor, but holding strong. This is why we put Vegeta as the last character. Such a solid, fundamental character, very good in neutral. He's able to make those comebacks for your team. Yeah, and he's he has all these tools at his disposal, and not once did we see him wake up with a DP too. He hasn't even shown that tool. He's confident with his blocking. He's confident in those situations. And the fact that he still has that in his pocket it should be incredibly scary for Legendary Predator. Yeah, we haven't seen it just yet. I mean, you know, this is one of the things I really like about this, uh, the Adult Gohan Cell Vegeta team is that it is a double DP team, right? You know, it is a very high pace. It's hard to keep your turn versus them. On top of which, you have assists all around. DP assist covers very well. Oh, it's so dirty. I mean, <laughs> all of, I'm, I am glad that we are finally seeing the value of the DP assist from Adult Gohan because it is tremendous in my opinion. Yeah. One of the fastest assists in the game, on top of which just has a great hitbox on it. Oh, no punish on the 2H. You gotta just hit it with an auto combo sometimes. And great tech for Fred. There you go. I like that. Nail just playing safe there. He actually saw, I saw that quite a few times from him in the previous set. He'd rather play safe and, and just look for something a little bit more uh, appropriate than to try to force something. But Fred forces something with the assist. Calling the homie. Let's see what he's gonna do here. Can't vanish uh, that, it's real! Cannot vanish that indeed. Mill's taking a lot of damage on the adult Gohan, so he's gonna tag in the Vegeta. And like you were saying before, so content to down back. Hey, you know, sometimes you just gotta block, and right there, Fred didn't have anything else left in the tank, and now you're back in the corner. Boom, the classical six seven assist. And you're seeing that DP assist from Adult Gohan in work. Been able to put people with extra blocks done in the air makes it so hard to read what Gotenks is gonna do next. Yeah, this little character, especially in those situations where you, you are stuck blocking, you don't get to decide, it's rough. And now, that Dragon Rush, he, he might be able to... No, he's not gonna be It's gonna be pretty either. close with the amount of meter that he has. So he's just gonna go for the ghost right here. <laughs> 
Are you afraid? Are you afraid? For the Are you scared, sir? Today, oh, you're man. gonna learn. Don't get afraid. 120 frames, the sparking is gonna save him just for a second longer, another set of ghosts. Can't spark these ones. Oh my god, that's so rough! Ooh, the run all the way up, fakes the dragon rush, and then gets him to press a button, scream on him. Ugh! That's so dirty. He just like was dashing him. Do something. Do something. And then Mil. Mil flinch? You know, and that vanish into the stream really tells me that he's pretty content with his Gotenks on point. He could have, you know, gone into 16 or something, but decides oh, super. to keep the Gotenks right there. Same thing, a bar for a bar. But both these guys have made comebacks within the first game, so now it's Mill's turn. It's not Sparky on the side of Red. I think he might spark here just to keep the Gotenks alive. Oh, it. no! It's a big old boot, and that's going to tie it up 2-2. Two two. Mill making the most of that three bars. That was so meaty. <laughs> he landed right on top of his dog. And that was so critical, right? Because he used the Vegeta assist previously. He wasn't going to be able to keep him locked down for that long without spending his own bar. So that was a critical kill for him. Yeah, I really like how um, Mill was utilizing his tools there, too, as adult Gohan. Kind of stuck in, oh, stuck in a situation using the 2M to get out. But now, Legendary Pred's like, yeah, I got that move, too, but it's Five great, bars. Right? Finally a level up in this game. Level 1 Gohan. We don't need levels. Oh my God. Fair and balanced. Sometimes, sometimes you don't. This character's so good at level zero, but at level one, opens up the options just a little bit more. Damage gets extended. Oi! Oh, that was that was actually really good by Mill. Yeah, very good. Pulling out the pulling out the grab. <laughs> nice punish on the whiff. Rocket kick in the air. Ugh. Doesn't get the three bars he wanted. Oh, the, the second hit. You gotta worry about the back fist. Oh, there's the first TV, Oh no! I told you. Oh, right he when he over. needed it. Unfortunately, wasn't able to get the double Sunday, but got out of the situation. No, oh, that should be a dead character, especially with this sparking. The 2M starter. Legendary Fred is most likely gonna even this up right now. Calling him. Calling the son. The little brother. No, he doesn't call anybody in. Take him down. It's because Gotenks is dead, actually. That's why. Dang. That was a good comeback from Legendary Fred right there. Really impressive. Uh, I mean, Mills would feel like he was pulling it back. He got that kill on the Gotenks. That was huge, right? Being able to get rid of the Gotenks, we both expected the sparking just to keep the 3v2. It didn't nope. happen, right? And so in that 2v2 is a critical situation for Legendary Pred to be able to get the character up and then was able to seal the deal in the end. No comeback for Mill that time. However, that means we got one more to go. Yeah, and um, what I want to see uh, in an adjustment for Mill here is while he was incredibly good on his defense, great at holding down back, eventually you get opened up. He needs yeah. to be able to go on the offensive like he did when he took out that Gotenks before he loses a character. I feel it's going to be the legendary bread show. It could be, it could be, right? And, and I think that one of the cool things about this set so far is that we've seen that losing the first character has not spelled the story for the rest of the game, right? It has been that, you know, people have been able to make comebacks back and forth, use their sparkings in different ways. So this really, this this last game feels very open-ended. Yeah, so I'm excited to see this because both of these players, I feel like they're close in skill level and they also play, they both play Adult Gohan and they know what each other has at the disposal, so yeah, I want I want to see how it goes. I want to see how it goes. After a game apiece, these guys with very similar teams and uh, hopefully a little read on each other, who's gonna make the better adjustment in order to move on? Reminder that this is on the loser side, They're playing for their lives here. I think they're letting their intros rock too. Yeah, look at this guy. Why would the Kill Saints drop this guy? There's no reason. He's so good. I love this. He's so good. It's like Vegito if he had longer legs. Ooh, Ooh call him out. Man, he... Legendary Spread's use of go Gohan Assist is so good. Just meeting him with the air and using that Gohan Assist keeps him locked down for a little bit longer. Gotta see what this goes. Oh, he and... That 2M from Gohan allows him to do so much damage. And I, feel, I feel like Mill is panicking right now, especially with that vanish. Oh, that so boy. Super Dash, my best friend. All right. Oh, I, I really like this choice for Mill right now because a big part of him getting opened up is the Android 16 assist off of the 6M and everything like that. <laughs> that's not how you take out the character. 
And trying to find this opening here. Legendary Fred playing so solid. Finds the hit with the Gotenks assist. And a snap in the cell? Yeah, yes. get rid of that cell. Targeting the green guy from both sides. But Legendary Fred finds the hit once again. He's looking good right now. Yeah, give me the level up. Let's see what his OP is here because you can do an option select. He just sparks right out of there. Just not going to lose cell. And once again, getting snuffed as soon as he sparks. Man, this has been a bit scrambly from both sides, but in this third game, Legendary Fred's been able to find the hit every single time. This is not gonna spell well for the Cell. Level two on the Gohan as well, only getting stronger as his match progresses. And now, Legendary Fred without a scratch, pretty much without a scratch on him against Mill with no sparking, down a character. I like, I like that Mill went to go target the 16. Mainly, we have seen that the Gotenks and the Adult Gohan have been the point character. That was supposed to be too much. Yeah, it was supposed to be. But, I mean, all things considered, this isn't too bad for Mill. I mean, he lost the sparking, but if he's able to convert after this hit, he's going to look really good. There we go. Level 3. I like that. Yeah, not a bad decision. He's not going to kill either way. Oh, baby. Big boy, you got to watch your dome. Let's go for the leg loops. Oh, God. A little nervous, maybe. I don't like. Oh. Hey, there you go. There you go. He's now finding consistent hits, although everybody's being tagged out. They're being cycled, so a lot of health being recovered on Fred's team. Yeah, he needs to make sure he takes down this Gotenks here, or else it's going to be. Oh, there's Spark. Yeah, that's a, that's a really respectful Spark from Fred. He recognizes Mill's momentum right now. This fan is full. There you go. Gonna go for the mix-up after this. Oh, what? oh, no, wasn't able to get the full combo, but he bites into the 5 age. No super dash afterwards, but Mill, he is still consistently finding hits. And the best part about this is that he's not losing too much health himself. It's been a, it's been a hot second since he's been hit. As soon as the Gohan has come in, I don't think he's been touched. Dude, I think I think Mill has done maybe two characters worth of damage, but the cycling has been able to save one character after another. Fred eating this level three. There's no spark. No spark. What's gonna happen oh, afterward? Oh, no! The bait. See you later. Dashes all the way over him and then uses a super dash to find him. But man, the conversions have been such a problem. Finally. Fred finds a hit. This should, this could be a, no. He, he could have extended it after the ghost from two level ones into a level three, but not confident in the execution. Just goes to the hard knockdown command. But look at all the damage he loses. Gets touched once, and his old gold Gohan's almost out of here, keeping him on point. And that is gonna be a mistake for him. Loses the adult Gohan, and that's just gonna be left for the Vegeta. Yeah, and Legendary Fred was able to make that decision pretty confidently, understanding that there was no assists on deck for the side of Mill, and he was either gonna continue mashing after the 6M, or go for another reset overhead. And his guess was correct, and now Mill is being put on the back foot on this Vegeta, but we've seen him come back. Oh, can he go for the level one here? There oh, it is. There it is. Yep. I like that, get a little bit more damage off of the ghost. Yeah, it's gonna have the mix-up because he's in the corner, expected a DP, tried to bait it with a safe jump. So scary. <laughs> little limbs. Oh, man. There you go, not super dashing after that one. Recognizing that he's reflected it, he's ready with his own punish. But this isn't a terrible situation for Mill. There it is, right there. I was gonna say, he's got a lot of meter to work with. Okay, just big bang attack here. Just big yeah. bang attack. Trying to spend as much uh, as much damage as possible. Trying to save as much meter as possible. Sorry, because he knows that is going to be the key factor in his ability to take this. 78 seconds left. You know Pride's gonna be able to wind this down, grind it out if he gets the chance. No, oh, there it's all it is. on Mill, and he finds the hit. He overextends. Oh, no, but he jumped straight up. He wasn't able to finish it. We still have just about a minute left. Mill can take this back now. That is a huge drop on the side of Fred. Goals about dashing. Oh, my God. Remember, 5L moves 16 forward. So that no! Was oh! The miss input from Mill in from downtown. Put him in the trash. Plant myself a vegetable. Off to the races. We're going to the next round. I loved that moment from Mill. He goes EX rocket kick into Vanish, right? Jumps up, super dash. B 
because his 5L moves him forward, so it crosses himself up when he does that. Yep. It's a very, very good way to beat 16s. It even works in the corner on top oh, of yeah. that, which is really, really good to note. However, Call he's not able to get the full combo. That that's that's super duper rough. Because you felt like if you got the if you got the hit on there, that was gonna be a level three. Maybe not kill, but a great situation for yeah. Mill. The comeback was definitely possible after that, but the drop combo made it really difficult. And the time winding down. That was it. That was it. Unfortunately, that's it for Mill. Great set from the both of them, though. Yeah. But we're going to have to move on. Yeah, so Mill goes home, seventh place. Great match from both of them. I don't go on players. I want to see how Legendary Fred uh, stands up. I believe that he will be fighting against uh, Rogue Yoshi in the loser side next. Um, if, I, if I am not mistaken, am I a mind? We'll figure it out in just yeah. a second. However, while we're doing that, let's bring you another match. We got Timo versus Broken Alliances ASAP Ricky. And you know, uh, ASAP Ricky's team is very, very, very interesting. This is one of the teams uh, when I saw on paper, I was mega surprised. Two pretty under uh, underrepresented characters with the 21 Broly, and then you know, slap the Vegeta on the back there. Why not? Yeah, and um, I think we might have the names that we get here. Because um, ASAP Ricky would be the one playing the game for 21. Timo, consistent Bardock player. There we go. And this is Bardock. <laughs> Love me some Bardock. I mean, he is playing this like a Bardock team should. And I was talking about this a lot not too long ago. You know, Bardock's strength as a character is that he's able to get, if you're able to get two hits, it turns into the Revenger Assault, it turns into the level three knockdown, the OP afterwards, you might lose a character in this situation. But it's good defense right there. No, goes for the guard cancel, and the big guy's gonna have to take the damage. Boom, tag him right back in, and that's another thing too, Bardock has all these tools available to him. He can guard cancel on his own, like other top tier characters, and he has multiple, multiple um, Z changes where he can just get so much damage pumped out, but that doesn't protect you when you whip him reflect. There you go. Good situation for Ricky to be in, right? Got the hit with the 21, he was in the corner where he wants to be, where he can get a lot of damage. And while Bardock is capable of achieving those two touches as well, that's one of the more key <laughs> factors of Android 21. Oh no, that's not 2M. Oh uh, man, I was kind of happy. I was like, are we going to get to see more Impact Palm? I was pretty stoked, but uh, no, not today. ASAP, Ricky going to be left with the big guy. Oh, but Broly in a class of his own, large character in the game, and the stagger. So scary. Chuck him onto the floor. Oh, we wake up like that for sure. Use the Bardock assist so we can get the command grab afterwards. Nah, just force the spark. I like that. He doesn't want to eat another mix up. Understands that once Timo gets even more momentum, it's not going to be wow. a good time. That was bold. That, that was, uh, yeah, cloud nine levels of read right there. That was ambitious. <laughs> doesn't work out for Ricky. Timo able to find the hit with the 16. And uh, for the first time in a while, we've seen a guy on, in this uh, in this top eight comfortable with playing with the 16 on point. It feels like everybody's been playing him for that great assistance. Sometimes you just gotta take the throw. Don't blame him one bit. Timo able to find the kill on 16, or sorry, on Broly, and we're just gonna be left with the Vegeta. And there's no sparking, so the comeback seems a lot less likely, but he's average. Could make this happen at seven bars on deck, but has a long hill to climb. Down you go. Oh, revenge of us all. We gotta keep it nice and simple. Let's use the level three that gives me the best Oki. I sure do the love scary these. Soki, maybe. Oh, oh, that's so dirty. That's mine now. Fakes the late air dash, goes low. Using the sparking to get that extra bit of damage. Another level three on deck for him. Gonna spend it on some ones though. And that's gonna be it. Timo taking the first one. 140 seconds, but man, was that handed. Android 16 and Bardock is just so good. Match made in heaven. And so you know, good. we didn't even get to see the Zamas, but we saw the assist, right? And the assist itself, phenomenal. Huge hitbox, covers the whole screen. Man, it, it's it's a tremendous assist. And that's why we've seen a lot of people actually start picking up the Zamas. A fantastic assist. Definitely unique in terms of how his mix-ups work as well. So when you put him on point, you definitely have to think a little bit differently when you play against him. 
yeah, a lot of characters will go for like side to side mix ups or go try to always look for that low, but Zamasu utilizes the overhead better than any other character in the cast. I'm just gonna say it. And that assist allows Bardock and other characters to do what they can do with their DHCs, lets them extend their combo. Like Bardock can just keep swinging his monkey arms. He's got the assist pressure. I mean, I'm telling so you, good. Bardock teams, man. Look, look, the first hit gets you the corner. Look. The second hit gets you the level three. The third hit gets you the kill. That's, all you That's need. how it works, That's man. All you need. And it's and it's, it's such a solid way to play that character. You can you don't even have to put the character on point. You can put whatever you want on point. Just get the first hit, get the, get the corner, get the second mix up, and then you're good. Revenge your assaults. Then we got the 50-50 afterwards. It's so good. Unfortunately for me personally, I didn't get to see Ace Abri's team in full force. We saw the little hit with the 21 uh, impact palm was pretty cool, but we didn't get to see it in full action. However, maybe he's gonna get the chance. Teemo looking good, but let's see if he's got a rebuttal. Oh, that's exactly what he's looking for. The 6M into the Android 16 assists, and now send him right down. Let's see what he does. First hit gets you the, the first corner. Hit. Okay, he's counting. Oh, man, and the response. Second hit gets you out. <laughs> Second hit gets you out of the corner. Going to use that Broly assist. Oh, no. Very similar, actually, to uh, Zamas assist. Yeah. Big projectile, covers the screen. Fantastic for lockdown. Great assist to pair with the 21. And it gives you such DHC potential that you really wouldn't imagine it does because yeah. it scoops you up and keeps you there for a minute. Got to block eyes. <laughs> Revenger Assault is inbound. <laughs> Second hit gets you. No! All right. Wow, actually doing it with the 16. I like that because now he gets a little bit of extra damage. While it is negligible, um, probably feels a little more confident in Xander 16 Oki and does not confirm. Oh, man, wasn't able to get the kill, but he finds the hit afterwards, and that's going to be a level one sparking from Ricky. This is a disaster. That was, that was some, that was some Fist of the North Star moment stuff where he's like, ha, I got out, and he's just like, you're already dead. And what? <laughs> And he's done. It just explodes. But ASAP Ricky with the command grabs wants to turn this around. Get oh. out of here, you beauty god! Oh my god, he's fighting reset after reset, throw after throw. Timo's trying to do anything to get away from the big guy. Oh my god, he's a bad man! Oh, wasn't able to get a full set of hits on the side of Bardock, but he is tossing this god around like a plaything. I've been rocking the color green since the 2000s. Get off my ring! Right, we got the orb set up. Let's see what the Zamas can do. That's rough. So much work from that Brawly, and then it's like, well, Revenge of Assault! <laughs> Zamas said, you, know, you thought you were a world breaker? Nah. You're going to pay. <laughs> Into the Bardock. Oh, oh wow. I, a super jump mix up. I, I feel like that was actually a misinput. It might have been a misinput. The, the timing, you have to do instant air dash into eight um, on your direction. Yes. In order to oh, <laughs> Oi. Broly, what are you doing? I didn't even see his hand reach. He's like, I'm just tickling your toes, buddy. Down. That was wrong. Smashes up the arena. Man, the Broly has done more work than I thought he would. Maybe a little bit of matching familiarity from Timo, but everybody gets hit with 2H the same way. You're in the air, big shoulders inbound. Doesn't even have to spend the meter there, too, so still has three bars on deck. And now all we have is a Vegeta left, but if he's able to take down the Android 16, Smoss is only one touch of that TP. What do you think? This man is crazy. Oh, he okay. finds a hit here. Are you think? Is he thinking maybe about the snap since he's not gonna kill the 16? Oh, hey, that is a that is a super dash. Sometimes you get blessed. Oh, just the that was simple. Just to switch him up. He's not ready to block. He was probably looking for a DP, and that's how it goes sometimes. Now you got to deal with this mix up, and if Timo's able to get the hit, this should this should be it. lights out for Ace Abrik. Yeah, very close to that second bar. So this is scary. Oh. oh times are wrong. There it is. Oh, oh my god. Do you see how late those hands hit? It made you think about it a second longer. It just. I want you to uh. hold that. I want you to hold that. You may not be Son Goku. Good enough. That's not, that felt like the last active frame. It was just so late. But, I mean, it seemed like Timo knew exactly what he was doing, right? He pressed yeah. the button anyway because he was like, all right, this is as good as going to hit. Boom.
Gah. See you later. Put him down and Timo taking it 2-0 over ASAP Ricky. The first match was kind of a smash, but ASAP Ricky came back incredibly strong uh, with the Brawly. Sadly, going to go home in seventh place. Uh, the big Mr. Big Green himself, Energy Blaster, not able to make it happen. So now we get to see Timo move on with the, the shell we all know and love, Bardock Android 16. It's a pretty good shell. I love it. It's so good. Shell. But, you know, uh, good to see Timo moving on. Obviously very strong. I like his team quite a bit. Unfortunately, not going to be able to see a little bit more of Ricky. You know, I, I like, I really like 21 as a character. I think she's mega fun to watch. Oh, yeah. So, unfortunate for me. I really hope that he got to see a little bit more of the Broly mix. Yeah. Where he, but it felt like every hit that he got wasn't able to be converted into something... Uh, concrete per se the thing that makes brawly scary right which yeah. is just the throw air dash mix throw air dash mix and uh we didn't get to see it that time unfortunately. we just got the throws yeah we just kept throwing them so we're staying on the loser side we are going to go to losers quarterfinals we are going to go to legendary pred versus rogue yoshi oh sorry versus monkey madness sorry this is the first one we'll go to after that but got the green guys coming back on the play they're going to be a lose order match. And we have another adult going on, and this is the DP. This man is so brave. And it's so hard to block these tall characters against all gone. Like, that is one of the things that uh, people have been really taking advantage of as of late. You've seen a lot more fuzzies on tall characters. You've seen a lot more of that abuse of the big body. And, uh, it's, you know, it's a good thing. Two of the best characters in this game are big bodies. Oh, and then some of, like, another one of the best characters in the game is, like, mid-sized small. So we have a variety, but the power of these fuzzies makes it so these big characters, you know, they, they go down on the toe to play a little bit. Yeah, Legendary Fred finds the first hit. We've seen how comfortable he is on the Gotenks. Oh my God. And I love, you know, for the most part, I kind of don't like going for mid-screen ghosts, but... It's not bad to test your opponent at least once to see if he knows how to get away from you. Yeah, because there, there are answers to it. And if you don't know the answer, hey, suddenly becomes a great option. And it's just like that. Legendary like, Fred able to take down Monkey Madness itself. Yeah, and formidable meter as well, right? He's been kind of low on the meter, but he only had to spend one to get rid of that one. Monkey Madness now left with the bald guys. There we go. I want to I wanna see what he goes for in the hooky here. He's got to be pretty in. Nothing interesting at all. Just goes for the double overhead with the toes. That should be a dead go on. This is evened up now. Honestly, I got mixed there because I thought he was going to go for something crazy. Like, you you have to respect the Gohan DP, and he's just like, Lucky man. No, you're good, you're good. Sammy's over uh, here brooding I'm, I'm, about something. I'm, 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 I'm thinking about something really interesting. It's all right. We got Legendary Fred here playing with the 16. It, putting him on a point a little bit more than I thought because, you know, we've seen so much in the 16. And I generally think that the Gotenks plays better with the 16 assist than the opposite. Yeah. And I, I think that's maybe due to, like, the strengths that Android 16 would have against, say, like, a Piccolo. Um, just putting him in those mix up situations, especially the mix ups he can generate off of the uh, donut mix up. But, you know, sometimes going just for damage doesn't pay off, and now Legendary Fred is forced to tag in the Gotenks. There you go. Level melt no, level one, level three, maybe. Doesn't want to burn the health. Alright. Yeah, maybe oh. think it's not gonna kill anyway, so why not just go for the mix-up? And one of the things about the ghost Oki right there too is even if you get a hit with the ghost, it's so hard to convert. And it's it's incredibly hard to practice too because the hits are gonna be inconsistent. So it's one of those things where you have to just constantly grind, right? You just have to constantly put opponents in that situation and then sort of make a read on what their defensive option is going to be. In that way, you're able to get the conversion uh, a little bit more consistently. However, Legendary Fred going to level 3 on the 16. Not enough damage, but he's in a good situation. Just a walk up to L. For some reason, a command grab went out there from Madness. I feel like he was mashing. Level three, I have a hundred percent. Like that, that hand came up, and I'm like, I've been there. And then there, nice tech though from Madness. And Legendary Fred put himself in a dominating position where his Android 16 was bleeding, and now it's gonna be bleeding a little bit more. Pumping. 
Chouts. Oh no, gonna spend the Chouts-u! Oh. And it's enough this time. Monkey there you Man. Go. <laughs> a little bit more calculated on the meter there. He still's got three bars to work with. A lot, of, a lot of health to go through Fred, though. He's got the sparking on top of it. And no takes with sparking is one of the best characters in the game. I would say he's top three anchors um, with sparking at the end. And uh, it's just rough to deal with him because he creates his own mix-up. I do really like that Fred went for the sparking in that situation instead of waiting for him to himself to get hit and recover less health. Now he's going to be able to recover a little bit more health. He's only got three bars. Not going to spend it because it's not going to kill. Oh, finds the late super dash. Gets another hit. Not going to go. Yeah, spent the vanish. So he's going to truncate his meter gain. Wasn't able to get that three bars. And now you're stuck under that pressure again by the go takes and he caught you mashing. Honestly, still a good situation for Monkey Madness. Finds the hit. Oh, that's going to be it with the level three. Doesn't even need to, but he's going to go for it anyway. Why not? Leave a big old hole in the ground. Go ahead. Legendary Brad. Mm -hmm. Child play. Don't you know I'm from the Crane School? I'm an Apex Predator. <laughs> confirmed here first. Nat Geo just confirmed that Cranes are an Apex Predator. You got to watch out. Right, CTN has got three eyes. All cranes have three eyes now. We're going back to the ring room right now. Maybe a character change? Maybe a character change. Maybe just a second for a breather. That was a close game towards the end. That was close, yeah. That was like a close game towards the end. You know, really good stuff. You know, we were talking about how much damage that uh, a character like Tien puts into your team, right? Yeah. Having that orbital cannon from downtown. Just being able to put in just a little bit extra that other characters cannot. Uh, on top of which, having that Chaozu being able to do a substantial amount of damage at least once in a match. Yeah, um, and no change here. I think we just wanted a second to readjust. Maybe my sparking button wasn't working. Who knows? But we are going straight back into this. Monkey Madness now up. And let's see if he's able to have a little bit more momentum in the early game to uh, take down Legendary Pred. It's all or nothing. Yeah, oh, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. This is not what he's looking for. Oh. Spark. Is he still in there? Oh, wait, he was still in there. Gotex takes so much blue life, but it's all up to Predator now. Sorry, just Legendary Fred. If he's able to play good defense, let that go Gotex recover some health, he's going to be in a good spot. But no, he finds the hit. He's going to get the kill too, which means he's not even going to have to tag. He gets to eat his cake and have his, I lost it. Have his cake too. I'm sorry, there guys. You go. And that's going to be it. Although Gotex recovers quite a bit of health. Man, he lost so much so quickly. And he got a little bit of that blue health back, so not everything on his plate looks bad, but immediately picked up. Reality Stone keeps him in the air. Now, one more mix is going to do it on this Gotenks. I will say that was a fantastic conversion out of the air. Yeah, oh, it just Sparks does not want to be under that pressure any longer. Thank oh, you, Finger. That must have, been a, must have been a Mr. Flex off the cross up. Yeah, probably was trying to go for the reflex. And now you got to deal with Ghost, Oki. There you go. I like it a lot better in this situation where you're able to go for constant mix-ups. The threat of the Ghost. No, they mess up the combo. Every single time. It's so hard. And we discussed that earlier. Even though Ghost Tanks is so great, you have to be able to convert off the Ghost. And just a raw 2-8. This man is crazy. Oh, my God. All the, <laughs> all the beams on the screen just deals with it with one vanish. <laughs> nice tag. But Legendary Fred, he needs to make the most out of this level 3 Oki right now. No sparking on his side. If he's not able to get the hit, Monkey Madness can run away with this. Beating up so a little Ooh. bit. Oh no, now Tien's taking the damage. A lot of recovery happening on Monkey Madness. What? I know! Still in block stuff, so the command grab wasn't able to convert. Not a proper delay on his side. Reflects the Chow to. And again, the guard cancel gets called out. You gotta time those better. Still doesn't have any meter to work with. Legendary Pred just gonna have to stick to the neutral. Madness finds the hit once again. He's looking really good right now. That Piccolo and Tien both were able to recover all that blue health back. And this level three is gonna put Legendary Predator in a situation where he's not going to want to block. He has to respect Monkey now because if he loses the 16, he's not going to have much of a chance against these three healthy characters with Sparking. But we've seen Gotenks come back, and Fred is gonna need to pull out all the stops against Monk. This is looking like a tall hill, for sure. And he finds a hit, Monkey Madness. He's been so consistent with this 16 in the second game. It's looked so good for him. Level one, level one. 
Yeah, green guys are gonna help put this kid to bed, and Team that is gonna be Monkey Madness moving on into losers semifinals. That was some. That was a good match from Monkey Madness. The first one's one is incredibly close, and the ability to make an adjustment mid match. Uh, Mid-set is something we don't get to see often in a lot of players and at the highest level of Dragon Ball. If you're able to make those adjustments mid-set, that's where you're able to have those clear-cut victory as well. Well, it was really close this match and then I was able to nearly perfect him here. That's where you see those adjustments and that's where you get uh, the, the cleanest players who are able to move through these brackets. Yeah, and, it, and it's really important for you to be able to have mid-match adjustments in Dragon Ball because the games are so long, Yeah. right? And if you aren't able to make mid-match adjustments, you might just lose an entire match. You only got two. Yeah. Or three, you know, if that's you get finals. that far. Jeez. But, you know, you only got two for the most part. That's still a lot of game to play. So having that ability to, you know, be able to make adjustments while you're in combos, while you're doing combos, that is the stuff that really makes the best players in the world. And so, you know, that skill is very, very important to have. That's why we're going to see Monkey Madness moving on. Losers semifinals in a great position to move on. But what we're going to see, who's going to meet him there? We got Teemo versus Rogue Yoshi. And we did not expect Rogue Yoshi to fall into this spot. No, I, I initially going into this tournament, because I've played Rogue Yoshi personally, and I've seen when he gets on top of you, his setups, they're crazy. But unable to get on top of you, Rogue Yoshi begins to fall apart. And that's exactly what happened. So I want to see what happens in this situation where you have Teemo who has neutral out the wazoo with Bardock and Android 16 assist and how he's going to deal with that because I think it's going to be the same story from what we saw on Winterside where he never gets the ball rolling and crumbles. That is true, right? So, that, I mean, that's that's a, a fear, right? Bardock being so good in the neutral. Bardock. Having that Zamas assist behind him as well means he basically just controls a big rectangle in front of you at all times. And so if you're not going to be able to get started as that Nappa, is he just going to be dead weight? Are you going to play 2v3 the entire time? You don't want to do that, especially in Dragon Ball. You need to make the most of each and every one of your characters. And if you're not able to win off of your sheer neutral skill with someone like Nappa who doesn't have all the tools, maybe it's time for a switch. I don't think it's going to happen, but if you're really looking to win, you got to pull out all the stops. You know, a lot of the things that we've seen uh, from... Nappa players recently yeah. is that they've switched to Nappa being on second and that way you're able to play a character that has better neutral maybe yeah like find the hit with that character and then let's use Nappa for the mix-up potential right we've seen a lot of 18 players actually play that way as well yeah because she's kind of struggles in the neutral as well in the same way that maybe let's pick a character with better neutral uh, I've seen a lot of Kid Boo Nappa instead of Nappa Kid Boo right yeah I've seen a lot of uh, characters like putting Bardock in front uh, because Bardock also uses uh Bardock also uses Nappa Assist quite well, or in vice versa. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of situations here, but we're going to stick with the same team for the side of Rogue Yoshi. He is rocking the Nappa, tried and true. Really big questions to ask him here versus Teemo. Yeah, and I feel like uh, what we're going to see here in this first match is if he was able to make the adjustments from before, because Teemo's neutral is incredible, while the one time we saw we saw him in an exhibition against one of the greatest players in the world, he did get completely dumpstered. He still goes far in most tournaments and one of the best players from Canada. So I'd like to see how he fares in the neutral, and that's a great start already, but no super dash left. Boy, that's rough. One of the things I really like about Bardock in general is that he can just say no to neutral if he wants. Say, throw the Lariat out, call that 16 behind you. By the way, you're in the mix-up now. Not able to build that third bar, but right now already forces the spark out of Yoshi, and finally he's gonna be able to get a start. And no! the he drops the hit. Timo goes for the side switch, blinking torture on the side of Rogue Yoshi means that's it for the Nappa on the sparking. And he is not looking good right now. First hits the corner, second hits the Revenger assault. Now Sammy said it's third hit time, and you're gonna lose, Mr. Baldi. Back to play, oh. Vegeta, you go. That's rough. That's rough. Hits him with the same spirit to finish him off. Rose Yoshi. Oh my god. How high was that auto combo? Bringing him back to the floor. Woof. That's one of the things you gotta love about this character, baby. Revenge of Assault, my favorite movie. I didn't know he was playing Super Scroll with how far his <laughs> arms reach, man. He's like, nah, 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 full screen. Oh, no! Oh, no, 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 no
Oh, oh my god, what is happening? We are playing Bardock versus Kid Boo, the Unga Bunga Boys. This is amazing. Say no to the neutral, man. Let's just go in. Finds the hit. There you go, using the auto combo, making the combo nice and simple for him to finish off. Takes him to the corner. Man, Teemo wants to keep the 3v2. And if he empty it, oh no. He can kill here, actually. Yeah, he's got two bars. Yeah, that's sparking, even though he had the reduced meter gain from the Vanish, he's still going to be able to do it in the first time we see Zamas, Zamas for MVP. There he is. Man. He popped up. I mean, that super does a, a bit of damage for a level yeah. one. So oh, yeah. Definitely a, a good way to finish that off. Uh, also going to be able to let Bardock recover a little bit of blue left, or life left. And, you know, that that is to the point where he might need two combos now instead of one. So definitely... Oh, I love that flight cancel right there. Just get me out. And right now, the big thing is, Timo has just been winning and triumphing in the neutral and then in the scramble forward. There you go. Finds the scream into the Vanish. He doesn't have any meter, and he truncated it with the meter spent himself on the Vanish. So wasn't able to get anything afterwards. Oh! Get that Looney Tune stuff out oh, of here. Boy. And there you go. Back to the protagonist. Bring the Bardock back in. Uh, Revenger time. He's the hero, baby. The hero we deserve. Oh, okay. okay. Probably, no, drops it. Probably could have extended that combo a little bit better to build meter. Uh, tries to go for an air series, not able to convert properly. And now, okay, all right. Finds him in the air, hits the 2-H, and that's going to be it. Teemo over Rogue Yoshi. A little bit longer than his previous match. 150 seconds it took. But, you know, again, so convincing. So convincing the entire time. Yeah. Even though it took half the game, half the count of uh, the timer, it didn't feel like at any moment that that Rogue Yoshi had the ability to play his own game. Yeah, as soon as he was forced to pop the sparking on Nappa and he dropped that key blast conversion, I felt it was already over. Like the mental mental went boom. Timo had him had him red and that like, was the moment. That, that was, was the, the moment. moment. That was his moment to shine and be like, I, I am going to convert this Nappa pressure. You're gonna eat my Cyberman. I didn't see one Cyberman planted that entire match. Not even in it. He's planted one in his last set and it opened him up because I think it was a miss input. <laughs> Nappa's not not playing the game right now. At this point, I actually would suggest to put Kid Boo on point. point. Kid Boo on point. Use the Nappa assist. Like, I, even even Gotenks on point. Like, go, I know why you want to put Gotenks on anchor. Yeah. But at the same time, he is a good neutral character. Let it rock. Let it rock. Come on, Rogue Yoshi. Show, prove us wrong. Prove me wrong. Prove I'm us wrong. I want to see the Nappa. Show me the Fu Manchu. Show me that handlebar mustache and the power. Like, this man is supposed to be powerful. I want to see Super Saiyan 4 Nappa come out. I don't want to see no Saiyan Saga Nappa. Ready? Let's go! Into this next one here. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. He gets the pressure finally. Bro, a combo from Nappa? He's here to play. Oh, no. Delay tag. He's mashing. He's mashing this man. It's me, Bardock! Oh man, Rob, wow, he just... Teemo just continued to do the combo like he was getting a hit, like he dropped the auto combo, and then he was like, oh, I'm, I'm still doing the combo, right? I love Bardock, And man. it worked out as a setup, gets the revenge assault. Oh my god, the Unga Bunga boy! My man likes to just put hitboxes on the screen. I remember when we saw Nappa play for a minute. Man, that I was thought, great. I was like, yo, Nappa Oki, let's go! Let's go, Nappa. No, you, you need to be stopped. That's rough, man. Nappa looking like a whole lot of Raditz right now. <laughs> I'm not looking pretty. Oh, man. Dragon Rush on the side of Rogue Yoshi. I'm gonna try to make, make this happen with Kibu Scream on him. Yeah, and he does it super high, so he's gonna be able to get a better Oki setup than if he did it on the ground. With a safe jump. Oh, nice call out, and he's still mashing! Finally uh, pays for his insulin. I don't think any part of that actually scaled. Everybody, like, seven raw hits on its own gets Bardock out of here. But finally, Teemo loses a character. Rob Yoshi looking a lot better when he's playing with the kid move, but Teemo finds the hit, finds the Dragon Rush with the Zamas. Level three. Put him in pizza. Make ourselves a gumball pizza. This is gonna do so much damage. Oh yeah. 
so little scaling on this right now. Oh my god. Yeah. I agree with that. Not with that. <laughs> that was such a great response from Timo. Wasn't able to beat the combo. A little late on the reflex. Early, sorry. And another drop on the side of Yoshi. You can't be doing that, but he gets the pickup. But, ah, uh, Kid Boo is so bad. Oh, what are these scrambles? He's so bad at converting those double Sundays. A uh, great point character, but his hitboxes don't really lend to it. The sparking is gone on the side of Teemo here. Nice. So see him. I love that he was just... Ah, oh, very, very nice. I love the range he was standing at where only Kid Boo has that ability to control. Nice super dash too, and like even though he's utilizing that control right now, he's gonna go for the setup here with the hell zone, the rain of affection. I uh, wasn't able to stop it, got the hit, and Rogue Yoshi is able to tag the 16. If he gets rid of this assi assist problem, it'd definitely be a big win for him. But he eats a shoulder instead, and now you got to deal with another mix up from the 16. Grab the young man, put him down. I think he goes overhead here. Oh, yep, there's a side switch. Oh, Damn. Not a good look here. He just needs to build that last bar. He's going to use the assist to make sure he's going to keep the meter gain. Is this enough? No. Oh, hard enough damage. It calls out the 2H. Stop sign. No, no. Young man, this is my battlefield. And what looks incredibly good from Rogue Yoshi and turned on its head quickly from Teemo. Yeah. One saving grace for your Yoshi, he's got a lot of meter to work with. A level three on deck too. Gonna spend it right here. This comeback is possible too. Kipu has the mix. Uh, it's a lot harder to work for now, but it isn't It isn't impossible, and that's exactly what he needs. And Rogue Yoshi read that so well. Remember what we were saying before about how much better his Oki is when he can do the level 3 in the air. Doing oh. it on the ground means you don't actually get Oki. So what does Rogue Yoshi do? He just runs up and blocks and looks for the response. And the moment where he stops blocking is where Zamasu, out of combo, God, mashes straight through. And Timo sends Rogue Yoshi home. Quickly getting eliminated from the tournament, from the loser side. Looking looking like he had a great chance to go far, but not coming up. Napa wasn't able to show up today. You know, I, I did have a bit of a question on saying, you know, uh, we saw a lot of the Bardock. Two games in a row now, yeah. we've seen Bardock has really been the main, uh, the main guy for Teemo. So I was like, well, you know, what happens if you lose the Bardock? The Zamas was able to pick up the slack. Rogue Yoshi looked so much better when the Kid Buu was able to do some work, but it wasn't enough, unfortunately. That's going to be fifth place for him, and Timo's going to move on to the loser semifinals. Please, however, don't go away. We will be right back with USA East Coast Online Dragon Radar event. My name is Sammy Fish. And I am Jake Ryan, and we are coming to you with the winner's finals today. Now, please tell me a little bit more about these winner's finals contestants that we are waiting to see. Well, we see a lot of a lot of donuts on the screen. That's because these two guys who we're going to see on the winner's finals definitely ran through their competition. Super hot garbage and Doza in the winner's final side. On the bottom, we got Monkey Madness versus Timo. Monkey Madness, uh, unfortunately, dropped down to the losers after uh, getting too owed by Doza, but was able to take the win over Pred. And then is going to face Timo, who, uh, I mean, I don't know how he dropped into losers, but since then has been very, very dominant. Four games straight where it feels like he's been able to control the pace for the most part, except for that last one where we saw maybe there was a comeback in there, but no cigar. It's going to be Timo and losers semifinals, but winners finals first. Yes. Doza versus Garbage. And I feel about talking about talking about that pacing, which we were, which we were seeing in Timo's play. I feel that's very present in both. Uh, super hot garbage and Doza. So I feel it's going to come down to whoever gets the hit first and is able to establish that momentum because once the ball gets rolling, it's game over, especially with the potency that Doza brings in his blue Goku. So Yeah, when you say, when you when you see blue hair, it's time to rush it down because uh, all three of those characters do that and that's the same for blue Goku. Also got the Bardock and the Goku assist. I mean, we were talking about it before. Uh, the break here, Bardock is such a good character second because once you find the hit, you're able to tag into Revenger Assault, get that level 3 knockdown, go for the mix, the bar the Super Saiyan Goku behind there for a fantastic beam assist as well. So, I mean, all things considered, 
Uh, this this team that Doza has created now that he's removed one of the Gokus is really scary. And he's able to infuse even more damage into this team with the pump that Blue Goku provides. And that forbidden starter, already 50%, he didn't even pop any supers. Just one hit. Yeah, Same first count. hit, <laughs> I, I count every time. You got a Bardock on your team, I'm counting the hits. But Doza has to snap. You're going to throw the Vegeta in there, and I like the targeting on the assist. I, I, I really like that too because it's integral into creating the neutral situation for super high garbage. You get rid of the Vegeta and you remove a ton of the neutral presence and assist, but now does it gets picked up off of that damage. Yeah, I remember we were talking about before about how Nappa wasn't able to really facilitate neutral for himself. I feel like this team for garbage is what does it. That 2H, he's just reading his heart tag. You cannot do that to me, Doza. And now I am in in another banish. Doza. Nice. Vanish. Yeah, managed to save himself from the super dash. On uh, the sandwich between the shoulder and a Vegeta gets him the Dragon Rush. And this is actually going to be the first time that we've seen Doza lose that Goku blue. So I want to see what he's able to do with this remaining shell of Bardock Goku. Yeah, and you see both of these characters that he's playing, Vegeta and Kid Buu, both helping facilitate uh, Ginyu as soon as he gets in here. And that's so rough right there, too. Oh. Every single vanish, Doza is getting called out and probably trying to wake up, press some buttons. Ginyu comes in, gives him the shoulder, and this double big bang, it's, it's going to be close. Oh, oh, really close on a sliver of health. He tried to find the hit on the way up. Doza finds the time to sparking and is going to keep him alive for just a second longer. Good defense on his side as well. Ginny with the shoulder tackle also helping him out. And he's staying calm but wasn't able to get the double reflect in the corner. No, the Oh, no, the double Sunday. They're getting beat up. He saw Kid Boo finally flying out, so he goes for the double super. Man, that was a lot of damage, but he's going to have to cash out on it. No meter to vanish after that EXDP. Incredibly bold. Oh, just all right. Finds the hit, but I am afraid the Kid Boo might have recovered too much blue life to to worth a snap. But he's just gonna be able to find the hit. No level three. That had to be a miss. But he had the kill there. He has four bars. He could have gone for a simple extension. There's no way. There's no way he wanted to go for a mix up. Yeah, I don't think oh, that was. Uh, Definitely Doza. rough, but hey, Goku, definitely a pretty strong anchor because of how good he is in neutral. Did he get the hit? He did get the hit on him. Just wow. attack on a little bit of extra damage from the Big Bang from downtown. That's, that's some old school stuff right there. Regular old DHCs. Hey, sometimes you just got to go. <laughs> the timing. That was for timing. And he opened wow. him up. Oh, my God. I think, I think Garbage might be flexing a little bit. No, that was intentional. That was completely to get into Doza's head. And he's going to take out that first match. Kid Buu DHC, go out the Milky Cannon. Why not? Doza. got to wake up, man. You can't man. vanish like that against Garbage. This dude. So normally when, I, when you look at a team like this, you look at Kid Buu, Vegeta, you say Kid Buu, Vegeta, both fantastic assists for lockdown. You use it with the Ginyu in order for you to have better Ginyu mix-ups. We didn't see that from this. We actually saw the opposite. We saw Ginyu facilitate Kid Buu and Vegeta mix-ups. That was some big brain stuff from Garbage. I'm just going to say, like, his mix-ups were incredibly <laughs> clean. Even if something didn't work the first time, he went for the side switch Dragon Rush twice in a row. And it's like, come on, those will tech it. Just tech it, man. Dude. Got it, it once, didn't get it twice, and, like... Doza's tripping right now. He's actually using the delay with the Ginyu assist really well because it takes half a second longer than Bardock's assist in order to come out. Yeah. So what does he do is he calls it on the left side and then drops to the right side, creating that sandwich and making it just a little bit harder to deal with his team. It's very interesting stuff right here. Uh, on top of which is seeing that we're, we didn't – I don't think we got to see any of the Ginyu force at all in that. Yeah, at all. It was, it was just shoulder tackles. just shoulder tackles. So let's see, let's see how Doze is able to adjust in this situation. And as I said, the one who's able to build momentum is going to be the one to win. And Doza dropped the ball, and Shubar Garbage did not give him another opportunity to come back. Let's see if he's able to. Oh no, finds the first hit. Up. He's looking for the second oh. one. That's it right there, but it is the wrong team. <laughs> he's going to get the level three, however, nonetheless. No, he's actually going to go for the mix up here, he and he's three. looking nice. Man, he just mixed them up one time after another. Yes. Level one? No. This is going to need just a little bit more. There yeah. it is. 
There it is. Meaty after. Oh, you've got to spin the bar. Yeah, the meaty after the reflect catches him low, not reflecting enough to dissuade the pressure. And Doza immediately loses the blow to Blue Goku one more time. Green bars on the side of Hot Garbage. He is looking real good right now. Oh, missed the vanish confirm. Unfortunate. I don't need to play neutral. I got Bardo. Oh my oh god! Oh my god! That was so nuts! Alright, alright. You need to calm down there, Garbage. I know you're hot, but you need to cool it off a little bit. He's looking too nuts. He crossed him up with the two H, by the way, in the air. He crossed him up. Great tech from Doza, but hot Garbage! I actually really like that setup. But it didn't work out. That was great from Doza. Able to get the tech, and now Ginyu's getting beat up. Man, I'm still losing my mind over those two agents. Dude, like, that was crazy. That's mine now. That's amazing. Catch somebody mash and just do it, and we got a Revenger Assault. Doza needs to make this count. I need two H's in the air. Come on, man. He's got that level three loaded, man. One more hit. Oh, there it is. You asked for it. You asked for it. He's not even going to have to spend the three. Riot Javelin gets the job done. Sparking still on the side of Super Hot Garbage, but we got a match. Yeah, even though Sparking is on the side of Super Hard Garbage, Doza has the level 3 on deck, so this is definitely a great situation for him to even it up. Gonna see it? Yes, sir! All right, what is gonna be the mix here? I think he's gonna go... He's gotta respect the DP, so he has to go for something needy. Probably a safe jump. Oh, he waited. He wanted him to DP, but Super Hard Garbage ain't about that life. Come on, I'll block. That's fine. Good reflect from Doza, gonna tag in the Goku in here. I don't know how long he wants him in here, but he's definitely gonna be able to get some damage. That no bar knockdown. Goku makes him so good. Oh! Wrong button, sir! The distance on that is just not enough, and gonna be really close to kill here. Nah, not even gonna spend the bar. Got the sparking, and there's the meaty again on the reflect. Gonna side switch as a kid who normally does. Level one. Level one. Oh my god. Hit the knockdown. No, oh he's gonna go god. for the big stop! Oh, that, oh, that was, was so rough! Good. Super hot garbage flexing on him. Jeez. Oh man! You're expecting the hard knockdown from Final Flash, and he's like, no, 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 no. Super jump, super dash. You're not ready. And he was not. Doza, you've got to adapt to these mix ups, but I. I, I don't think anybody's seeing this coming. <laughs> Man, I expected that level three just like you did. I, Doza was not ready for it, and uh, man, he is left with just a Bardock with a little bit of health, not even enough meter to get some level threes down. Oh man, double reflect wasn't ready for it. One more hit on this Vegeta. He's gonna get the oh! jump done, but the instant air dash back after the up tech's gonna take down Doza. 2-0 for Super Hot Garbage. We are going on to game three. This is amazing, dude, super hot garbage. This is crazy. It's, I mean, he is not only putting the work to Doza, he's flexing on him. So for those of you who don't know, I found out in the break that super hot garbage actually uh, attends the NLBC and he goes by double L. He has taken down Hook Gang God at the NLBC, which means all these things we're seeing has beaten someone who has a Dragon Ball already. And, and on top of which, I remember uh, early on when, when you brought that up to me, the name immediately came to mind because it was oh. like, I remember going to Wednesday Night Fights one week and just being like, yo, did you hear about that Ginyu player who beat Hook? That's like, I clearly remember that specific sentence. And so he's been playing Ginyu for a little bit now, and uh, I really like the team that he's set up here. Very uh, high mix-up team, obviously, with the Vegeta, Kid Buu, a very good assist for that style of play. But yeah. he's also been playing some phenomenal neutral and uh, a little bit of pizzazz as well. Like... The creativity in his mix-ups right there because... It's pretty fun to watch. Like, any normal Kid Buu player, like, I've seen Super Noon do it a million times. A big bang and jack, final flash, all right. Yeah, deal exactly. With, deal with the Oki. And he's like, no, 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 we're going to mix it up. We don't want to do the same old, same old. We need to change the pace. We need to change our options because everyone's ready for this. They're not ready for what I have. And if he's able to do it one more time, Dosa's going to be sent to the losers. Shut out. I want to see him make these adjustments. I want to see him have an answer for the instant, the super dash uh, after the super jump. I want to see him make these adjustments, because if he doesn't, it's going to be... His tournament run may be over on the winner's side. 
There you go. Oh my god. And we've seen this so many times from the likes of Super Noon, right? Kid Buu finds the hit. He takes him to the corner. He's going to put on a lot of hurt here. Not going to be able to kill. Double level one. Actually, it might, it's going to get close. Yeah, no, 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 no. But he's going to call Goldo and forces the sparking. Yeah, and you know, that's a big win if I'm super hard garbage. Able to get that level one sparking. The boys are finally here. It oh. only took three rounds. And now the Ginyu Force and Aaron Bardock get straight to the ground. It's intact. He is, man, he is making it so rough. He is cycling through these assists so well. You don't get the play. That's what is Ginyu is all about, baby. That's what Ginyu is all about. That was such perfect. This is why this team is so scary. Two great lockdown assists covered by the Ginyu team as well. It is so hard to find your moment. And like typically you want to try to super dash out of that Vegeta pressure if he's going to keep on mashing, but the Ginyu force makes it safe. Vegeta just picks up Doza and we're already down to our last Goku. No sparking. Doza, what are you doing? We were talking about pacing. This was it. I mean, 70 seconds in, Doza is on just the Super Saiyan Goku. Where'd your resources go? I mean, he hasn't even spent a lot of meter on his side. He's just able to find hit after hit. Finally, a 2 H from Doza. This is, gonna be, this is a mountain. This is, I'm not even going to understate it. And the axe handles. Yeah, he's going to go for the nice combo, though. He's going to do a little bit of extra damage. This Goku, one of the few characters that can do a double level one. But he's just going to use one of them right there. Good calculation on the side of Doza. Could have gone for an upbeam to get a little bit more damage, but understood that the straight one was going to get the job done. And he needed to get that kill to slow down momentum because now Super Hot Garbage has gone back to the neutral. And we still have 200 seconds. This is doable. It's not easy, but it's doable. Nice. Oh, nice read. And I like the vanish. He gets away from the Vegeta assist. That was really impressive from Doza, actually. That was a nice conversion too afterwards. I didn't know you could go for the 2M from that height. And able to get a much better position with Oki. And now Super Hot Garbage. Yeah, good damage as well. Wake up Sparky wants to keep the 2v1. I don't blame him. He just needs to find this hit on Doza. But Doza oh. making it so difficult with the Candy Beam. Finds the hit. Oh my god, that was so good. Resets the Super Dash. And because of the Vegeta assist, able to keep him locked down. And now Doza, who was looking so clean on this Goku, is oh. going to get open up. <laughs> oh my god. If you want to find some dirty stuff, look no further than super hot garbage. He's going to sit there in grand finals waiting for you with the dirty stuff. That was... That's what I'm talking. He had a great neutral, but when he wanted to put some pizzazz, he wanted to put some, uh, wanted to put some flavor in there. That's definitely, that's definitely it, right there towards the end. I didn't Woof. block any of that. Woof. I didn't block any of that. I got. That's what I, I like I, to I was, see. I was exposed. Um, oh super hot garbage. I like those a consistent player. One of man. One of the runs one of the most unique teams and has some of the most unique setups, gets blown out by Super Hot Garbage. You, you, he wasn't ready for the Ginyu. He wasn't ready Dude, for any of Ginyu it. the Ginyu lockdown was crazy. Like, he was just, like, cycling through assists. He was running through the Ginyu team perfectly. He was making it really difficult. Even not even going for Meteors every time. He was going... You, there was a moment where I saw him go for Birder and Jace solo. Like, just, just the, the the single key blast that is mostly considered useless. He found, like, a little moment. He's like, oh, this is the perfect time to throw it. It was like crazy. Sometimes you gotta you gotta call the single boy. He's coming in. He's like, hey, yo, dog, I got you. All right. So, who's gonna face super hot garbage in grand finals? We're gonna have to run through three losers. One of those guys is gonna be able to get to that grand final spot. First off, we're gonna go back to a two out of three in the losers semifinals. We got Monkey Madness versus Timo. And speaking of pace. Oh boy, these two guys, they've capped it up as we have started, and we start off strong! Not a moment to waste, the rolling crush, able to get him into the corner, and Timo, we've seen him on the offensive. What is happening?! We are going to the scramble, boys! My the man did not want to block, he wanted to get out of dodge. And the dragon rush, immediately mixing him up, and both of these guys just... They want to keep going. There is no slowing down from either of them. And now we got a Revenger Assault. That's one hit to build the bar, two hit to get the super. Third hit, 
Is he gonna kill? Let's see. All right. Double reflect. I like it quite a bit. That is some knowledge shown there from Monkey Madness, and he's gonna be able to tag out the cell. Gonna recover some health on his side. Just grab him. Oh, forces the sparking out of Teemo. I oh. like. I like no, that from the side of Teemo. I do like that from the side of Teemo. He needs to find this hit. Oh, wasn't able to convert in that blue life. Just we're gonna be able to recover on cell just a little bit longer, but he's gonna be able to get good damage and good meter gain from the sparking. He goes for the Revenger as well here. I really like this over the choice of the Android 16 level three because now he's gonna be able to create that situation where the I think the mix up is a lot more potent, but the team at elbow. Get me out. Yeah, gonna tag out the Piccolo, and you were talking about this before, right? One of the signs of a great player is the ability to cycle through your characters, use that blue life health uh, recovery to its best potential, but that means you gotta stop getting hit, and Teemo, after that first bout, has been all him. And he doesn't even have to go for the fancy stuff. No extensions with Zamasu assist. Two supers, put him down. We have it in the bag, and that's our normals! Finds him in the air. This is exactly where he wants to be. He's going to vanish. going to tag the Bardock in there to get rid of that blue life. Like, even though he just lost a character, he is still going in. He has not stopped pressing buttons. The saving grace right here is that he's going to able to hopefully do some work with that sparking, right? And, and he has just a little bit left. Oh, oh he no! Into the auto combo. He was too thirsty for the last pixel of health on Bardock. Teemo using it to bait him into the corner. This full combo is going to hurt. He's a dead character. Tis that was power. so impressive. Actually, just waited because he knew he was going to go for a, a, a kill situation. And then he turned it on a dime, able to even get Bardock out. That's heartbreaking, especially because he had, he needed to spend, I, he either needed to spend the gear for the, for the chop as Piccolo, or he just needed to Go for a vanish. It was one pixel. One pixel. And that drop is going to make this comeback a lot harder for Monkey Man. Oh, wasn't able to find the conversion out of the air, but he's still finding hits. Staying solid. Oh, the back. Sparking on Tien is so good. You just have to be able to find the moment. That isn't it right there. Stop. Level three. Yeah, and at the minimum, this isn't going to kill, but it's going to force the sparking. So it is all about Teemo. Does he read it late, early? What's going to happen here? Going to go for the early sparking. He's going to recover all that blue health. Wow. Remember in the recent patch as well, he made it so that his Kyoho's do less damage to himself and sparking. He might not even get a chance to use the Kyoho, Dude, Kyoho he, though. He has to burn through all this recovery though. Really difficult. Nice guard cancel. Gets himself right out of there. But oh, the oh. rocket miss. But he timed it wrong. And the super dash. What are you doing, Monkey Madness? That should be it. Yeah, go for those. Oh, no. He's going to continue the combo. Yeah, building up meter. Double level one. The time stop on this is enough. And the burst makes Teemo take the first round. Monkey Madness has to make those adjustments. He has to finish his plate. If he drops the ball, Teemo is going to come back and steamroll him with that bar off. I mean, it was the difference between going up 2-2 two to two on characters or going down 3-1. to one. Yeah. And that was it right there. And uh, on top of which it was, you know, Teemo also showing that little bit of extra knowledge. 16, uh, level 3, very bad versus Sparking because it just lets him recover in the middle of the animation. So it goes for the double level 1, making sure that you finish it off. Oh, and he picks him up with the Android 16 assist. Just calls him right on top. We're at hit number 1. We are at hit number 1. Yeah, We're going to take him to the corner. Oh, nice jump out from Madness. Doesn't count. He yeah, yeah, it doesn't count. So he wasn't able to get that three <laughs> bars that he wanted, but Axe handles to the top of the head. The 16 assist, the best homie able to help him out there. Is this going to be enough damage? No, he, he was not able to build enough meter. And oh, you can't reality zone like that, sir. Get down. Double jumps out of there. Oh, he kind of crossed up himself. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like self. So did definitely turned around for just a moment, right? Yeah, he wasn't sure where he was going to land. He just holding forward there. Feels bad, but that's sometimes how it happens. And you 2-H too early. As soon as you whiff that 2-H, you secede the neutral, and you allow your opponent to open you up like this. And now Teemo puts him in a pretty bad situation. Well, one more hit. Has oh, no. Got him down with the blender. All right, there you go. Finally, the bald guy gets a hit. 
BGC trying to make a comeback here. Oh, it's fun. Very nice marking dealing with that mix-up. But he's going to switch it up. He's going to put him in the corner. Level three. There it is. Monkey Madness will be happy that he only has to deal with a level one sparking. He will not be happy with dealing with this mix-up afterwards. Oh, and he was trying to catch him off guard. It, the whipped M in the air to the 2L. Rough stuff. Monkey Madness loses. Mr. Green. This is a great idea from Teemo to sort of try to bait the uh, the parry. Yeah. But it didn't work out right there. Monkey Madness again. Just the Tien. Not even the sparking this time. In a very similar situation and keeps himself in a situation where he can confirm with that S in the air. Now you've got to deal with one more level three. Bardock is such a nuisance with this Oki right now. Yeah, and on top of which, no more sparking on his side. He has to win. He maybe went for. Um, I don't I know. He, I think he missed the uh, the run jump. Yeah. There you go. Finds the hit. Gonna use this Moss Assist in order to convert it to a little bit more damage. It's gonna be close. Yeah, try to get that third bar, but this is going to be very close. Nope. It's a boss. That super does so much damage. One of the hardest hitting level ones in the game. And that is going to be it. Teemo going to move on into Losers Finals. Where he will face Doza, who just suffered a pretty crippling defeat from the hands of Super Hot Garbage. And I want to see how Doza is able to bring it back, especially after Teemo did that. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be pretty interesting, right? Because... You know, we were saying earlier when when Doza won his game versus Monkey Madness, it was one of the things we noted was that he ran a very high-paced team. Normally, we see that out of the blue hair group, right? Yeah. Like, the, a lot of those guys able to really press the advantage once they're able to find a hit or some block. Mm -hmm. um, but specifically for this one, this is going to be, you know, Doza who got ran down. He got destroyed. Versus a guy who's been running people down. And this is going to be pretty interesting. So is Doza going to be able to make the adjustments against a very aggressive player? Or is he going to fall once again to someone who's just going to beat him down? He does have three games to do it. This is Losers Finals. So we're turning to a three out of five format here. And I like the switch here from Doza, especially in the situation against Teemo. He wants the stronger neutral. Bardock is on point. We talked about Rogue Yoshi potentially changing the order of his team to bolster his neutral prowess. And Doza does not hesitate to do so. And now he's putting himself in a better situation. And we got the Android 16 theme. Keep it bumping. I'm a personal... Uh, fan of the blue Goku assist. I think it covers a really interesting angle and it also has the hard knockdown properties, right? Or, uh, sorry, just knockdown, not a hard knockdown. My, my mistake. And you don't get that from many other assists, so able to be unique in that regard. But as we said, running down is what Teemo has been doing, and that's hit number two, and... Actually gonna go for the level one set, and that way, gonna be able to finish it off. One of the benefits of having that Zamas, but wasn't able to get enough. Doza not even hesitating with that sparking. Yeah, that's huge. And when you look at the level ones, you have to look at where the health is on the sparking meter, even though that's one of the best level ones for doing damage. The scaling just wasn't there. Yeah, Bardock able to recover at least half life here. Blue Goku doing, uh, <laughs> taking the hits for his dad there, fortunately, and that's going to be. Uh, pretty rough on his team right here. Bardock losing half his health. Oh, oh not able to baby. Kill, though, just not enough damage. Oh. That extension is so good. Man, that was pretty rough. And he lost over 50% of his team's health. It's so fast. But he finds the hit here. Finally, Doza able to get started and going to go for the side switch. Level three? Yep, there we go. Doza is going to have an opportunity to play the game right now. Teemo, I don't think he's going to spark here. I think he's just going to respect it and block. Oh, man, threw himself in the corner, unfortunately. And actually, that was a really smart read from Teemo. Recognized that he didn't want to be in the corner, so he goes for the Z change in that time. <laughs> oh, my God, the reflect after the Dragon Rush keeps him safe in this pressure. <laughs> Great blocks on the side of Demon as soon as I say it. There you go. As soon as I say it. No. Nice. Staying calm here. He has to keep this character alive. Oof. So patient. Just keep holding down back. 
Nice! And even the tech from Teemo! It's my turn. My turn, Doza. Man, how bad does that feel? You're able to get 20 seconds of block on one character and able to find the opening. Teemo with the great defense. Doza's got to wake up, I think. I think that right now the adjustments are not being made and Teemo is very aware of that because he just blocked clean for 20 seconds and there was nothing that those could do. Oh, there finally. you go. Finds the hit. Even delays the enhance the air dash just a little bit to throw him off. It's gonna be very close to a dead character here this level. The scaling isn't gonna be too bad. But he should get a mix up off this, or at least force the spark from Teemo and gets the kill. Perfect. There you go. On the last set of hits, I'll as well. Two to one. Unfortunately, no sparking, so. I mean, good situation for Teemo, but, you know, we talk about how solid Goku is as a character. Able to get those knockdowns in almost every situation. It makes him a great anchor, but you just have to play solid. There you go. Knockdown, like I said. Very and fundamentally driven, and there's a spark. <laughs> what is happening? He sent 16 out of there and then has to deal with Zamas. Doza finds the hit once again and he's burning through the sparking. And I, I, lo I love this right now because we're getting to see the, the true prowess of Goku, which is he kind of plays Blitzy some Dragon Ball, especially with oh! his just do it. Mashing out that level three on the command grab and he's gonna switch it up. Get the knockdown. All right, but this situation here is a little bit awkward. Goes for the side switch, but does not time to confirm properly. And jumps out of the level oh. three, but no! And that's three bars from Teemo. That's not gonna look good for him. He might lose this 16. Oh, oh my Goku god. And the comeback from Doza right now with just the solo Goku not even sparking to his name. Oh my god. Overhead in the Dragon Rush. This, this is going to be incredibly close. He's at least going to get level 3 hard knockdown here. Not going to be able to kill, but one more miss should do it. And Teemo falling apart after taking Doza down to his signature character of Goku. Unfortunate about this level 3 is that it does side switch, so it pulls him out of the corner. He goes for the empty instant air dash into Dragon Rush in the char three character comeback with the Super Saiyan Goku. It's me, Goku. Unbelievable. That's why I love this character. Being able to get knockdowns off most situations gives him the ability to be such a great anchor. Nothing personal, kid. Like, Goku just... Solid. So solid good. play. That's so all good. you need with that character. You were saying before, he plays footsies in this game. He is like what feels like the Ryu of Dragon Ball Fighters because he just he plays so fundamentally solid. And if you're able to play that way, this character excels. Yeah, and that's one of the things that a lot of characters don't really get to utilize, that, that emphasis of playing the neutral in a footsies kind of style, especially with that down medium, which is, it's low forward. It's low forward <laughs> from Street Fighter. I'm sorry. Um, it's 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 in that way. It's yeah. used in that way, definitely. But, I mean, Goku, uh, that was a great comeback. Yeah. I mean, we're, talk we're talking a little bit too much about Do Goku. Let's talk about Doza. Man, what a, clean. how he was playing so solid, waited for his moments. That snipe on the 16 assist definitely helped out there. That one moment where we were like, what happened? He punched that 16 out of there and then dealt with the Zamas afterwards. That 2v1 didn't matter as much in that situation. And that definitely made him just give himself another chance at taking or making that comeback. So impressive from him. And that's not, that's got to feel good if you're Doza, especially after how that game started. Yeah, and that's one of the things, too, that I feel like is a great weakness of Teemo that we haven't really discussed because we haven't seen it happen. When he loses his momentum, he gets desperate to get it back. And the fact that he didn't get the momentum back is what made him lose. And now Doza is in his head. It's time to go to the corner, and that's hit number one. Oh no, all right, wasn't able to get the double Sunday, but he does find the hit. Another side switch from the Bardocks. Using that key blast to just delay his Oki a second longer, finds the hit. That's gonna be rough for Doza. He properly extends this, drops it. Drops stuff. He would have got a kill here. This is so good. Oh, jumps away from the 16 assist. You see Doza looking for his moment. He also playing a little bit passively because of the Bardock assist. Recovering some blue life. Oh, the tackle and no confirm with a vanish and nice pun on the guard cancel. Tag him in, please, there. Snap in the Bardock. He lost so much blue health. He's on one hit. He finds it. Doza now playing off the momentum of that three-character comeback. He's woken up. 
Super Saiyan Blue. We got some Kyle Ken up in here. There you go. No conversion from Teemo. That's a big loss. And now Doza took the corner. He's feeling himself. Oh, oh. he is feeling himself. And, dude, that's why I love that key blast from uh, Blue Goku. Doesn't stop your momentum in the air, so it's just hard to recognize what's happening next. Level one, level one, level three. No, I'm just one and done. I like that. Yeah, I don't blame him for that one because he's going to save a bar for the mix up if need be. Do. Doesn't miss the setup. Nice block, Teemo. We've seen him earlier block everything coming at him. There you go. That's what I like to see from him. I want him to throw a little bit dirtier stuff in there. Even the le dealing with the reflect very well in the well timed guard cancel gets Teemo out of there. Even switches it up. The defense on Teemo is it's actually pretty incredible that he was able to block all of those things. And it, it is really an attribution to his, his, his skill as a player. And I Wow, I can't believe you blocked us. Yeah, I can't Oh my god. Oh, no punish on the reflect there. A little bit late on the empty vanish. <laughs> oh, there you go. Nice reflects. Oh no, Blue Goku gonna take a bit of damage. No level 3 here though, so just a soft knockdown. Let's see what comes out of it. I will say though that Timo did pretty dealt pretty well with the sparking, so that's a big win from him. The read on the Dragon Rush with the back dash. We got it. Level three, there it is. Get the tag out. Give me a little bit of blue health back. And now I think Teemo has the spark here. If he loses Android 16, his Zamas is gonna have enough in the tank to make it happen. So here's the spark. And no, oh, the, no! The meatiest of meaties. Maybe expecting a high-low mix-up. Maybe ex maybe on the side of Doza, a great read of the delay sparking. One way or another. Doza finds the hit and he's in a great situation. Can Teemo replicate the first game? Dude, if we had back-to-back -back 3v3, like, 3v1 comebacks, I'd be really fun. He does have five bars, four bars now with the Hell Zone. He's going to use the for the mix-ups. Reflect out of there. Didn't have the proper setup afterwards to follow up after the reflex, and now it's going to get punished in the corner, and it's not going to be enough to kill. Just barely didn't build that fourth bar, but now yeah. he has to spark. He has to. He has to spark here. I mean, it's just all about how, to, how he's going to deal with it, right? Goes for the early spark this time. Go that delay blue Goku call definitely keeps the momentum here just a oh, little oh, bit and he finds the hit low not a lot of life to recover so he's just trying to burn through that last pixel Doza much more commanding that first game playing off that momentum and now he's up two to zero trying to get back at super hot garbage in grand finals and in that situation you look at that mix up you see that whiffed M and you think oh maybe he's going for a cross if he's gonna hit me high and immediately mm -mm, it was all according to plan I was going for the 2L all along and as I said as soon as Amasu was out alone the sparking wasn't popped for the Android 16 he ran out of gas in the tank and he got blown up yeah I don't know what happened in that sparking situation with 16 right we both expected the sparking it was probably the right thing to do yeah. but maybe try to delay it because of you know trying to hopefully uh, bait out the bait or something like that. And it just didn't happen. He got the Dragon Rush, and that was a critical, critical point. Yeah. Basically sealed the deal for Doza. Up two to zero now as we go back into the lobby. Just a second. Timo just going to take a breather, and I don't blame him. I mean, it's been a rough two games in a row in two different ways. First, the comeback from Doza, pulling it back all the way with the Super Saiyan Goku, and then secondly, just getting run over by this mostly Goku team. Two and a half Gokus. And a theme we've seen too is uh, the adaptation in sets because Dozo was able to ad adapt in that single match on that Goku, figured out what he needed to do and came back. In the second match, the adaptation stayed and he crushed Teemo. And let's see if Teemo's able to reel back because right now it looks like Doza has his number. Oh my god, did you see? Yeah. He punched Get that 16 out of here again. Ooh. Oh, there you go. Different situation here. Timo finds the first hit. This character's so good at taking you coast to coast, though. <laughs> Especially with the assist pressure in that overhead. 6 seven into the assist. You know, it's getting his momentum going. And as you said, he's a momentum-based player. Level three. Yep. There you go. Finds that second hit. So he's able to get enough meter for the Revenger Assault. It's going to be sitting very, very close to that kill. No, he reflects and is punished for it. You cannot reflect those. Doza immediately losing the Bardock. And now Teemo is looking like 
emo of previous matches. There you go. Oh, wasn't able to convert off that Zamas assist, but now this is what you saw from Teemo in the previous two matches in loser's side. You saw him just going after people and mauling them. Another level three built up from him. Here, see what the mix-up is after. That's three bars on the side of Doza. If he's able to find the moment, there it is right there with the sparking. Oh! oh he's smashing! Oh, he got mugged! What are you doing? That super dash stolen from the air! Again, he's just smashing! He was not plus! He and he's not, not he's not able to burn through this sparking, but at the minimum, able to run out the time on it. It's only a level two. He's going to finish it off with the Revenger Assault. He's also mid-screen, so he has cross-up potential on his Oki right now. Let's see what he does, and he does go for the cross-up! Hit the dome, send him down. One more Goku. We've seen this before. Though. Oh, man. We've seen this before. This is the scary one, though. This is, this is trouble. This is Golden Boy. Finds the hit! Oh that? my! God bless the Bardock that? auto combo. Saves me on a rainy day. Bardock? Is able, helps a friend in need, has that extra bit of sugar you need for your bakeries. What a guy. What a guy. And go to the sparking? Don't Are we? It. No, there's no way. Don't there's no way. It. I'm not going to say it until it happens. He's building that bar. He's getting close he to it. it. No. Don't do this to me. I deserve ah! this. I deserve this. But he, no, he hit the spark. Oh, he, he got, hit the spark. He, he That's got right. Hit by the exploding spark. So we got to get open. Ah! I wanted to, to see the letters. You did it to yourself. I wanted to see the letters. Golden boy was there. And there was no golden letters for you. <laughs> I totally forgot okay. about it. I just okay. saw I saw okay. the green bars. I was like, ah! is it time? Is it time? Oh, ah! uh, how so close. But uh what a way to pull back the momentum <laughs> without or just having green bars across the board that's a that's the way to come back from a 2-0 and that's the adaptation that needed to happen timo timo's like all right you mauled me so this is fine I, I learned what i needed to do we're good yeah. we're good i mean you know that's the way to do it hey green bars all around uh maybe took a second thought and just went like all right what am i doing wrong well maybe i'm just i mean uh if i were to tell you the difference between game one and two and game three it's just the confidence like, that just felt like a confident player as opposed to the first one where he was just, like, kind of antsy. Kind of antsy, willing to let Doza just run in on him. Are you ready? Just little things like that. And now, you know, okay. just waiting Super Saiyan right Goku, there. yeah, gets beat up a little Ooh, bit. Oh, he just presses buttons. It was not his turn. He's like, yeah, it's, you're done. I was afraid of this. I was hoping that Doza maybe not feeling too down on himself because of how that third game went definitely doesn't look like he's feeling it me part of me play now and gets open up tries to go low but he's in the sky man your toes ain't gonna reach him down up there yeah goes for the side switch to key blast in the air to delay his op for the timing uh, uh, level three no level one level three no i'm wrong <laughs> yeah i think a lot of the times if they feel like it, they're not it's not gonna kill we'll just go for the level three on its own especially with bardock right just gives yeah. you a great 50 50. oh, oh he just smashes after the sparking he blocked the sparking too high so by that time he landed he wasn't in plus frame yeah and he missed the side switch there uh, pretty it, it's not too substantial of a drop for doza um one more hit should do it there's the counter sparking on the side of timo now we've got ourselves an even match and he just smashes afterwards it was an empty vanish tried to press buttons a little too late and this is such a huge hit for him able to burn the rest of the sparking and he, now he has corner positioning with the meter oh no he's not even gonna have to spend the meter with that starter the scaling is so good on that catches him out and now no sparking on either side and doza has won the bardu battle there you go, but does he know how to deal with the Samas? That is definitely the big question mark. Double overhead finds the hit. He's got a lot to work with, though. Witness the power of a god. Witness the power of an android. Put him into the dirt. Level three. I like this. I like this. All right. Dragon you like the way that this is going? Dragon. Oh, no. No confirm off the 5 0. Oh, not a good look. Oh. Beating up the blonde guy. He's got. He has to avoid getting hit here because now. Goku Blue is going to lose all that health. He needed to play patient for a second, but Doza had to go, go, Doza. Oh, no, he did it again. That's the second time we've seen Teemo drop that conversion. He does not have the timing. That's not good. So able to go into the Revenger Assault. I like that quite a bit now that Bardock has recovered all of his blue life back. back. There's no spark. 
He has no sparking. He does have the Goku assist to help him oh, out. Oh my god, that was so dirty! The whiff oh. mid-air. I, I, I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't so. ready for it either. I expected it to hit, so he went for the reflect. It didn't work out, and that's going to be it for the 16. Just the Zamas left. No sparking on either side. But the one saving grace is that the two assists on the side of Doza are on one combo left. So he's able to get this Goku out of here. He's able to make that comeback. It's possible, but Doza has something to say about it. Finds the hit on the god. There's no supers in that combo so far, so that was 60% of his health right there. And this should be it if he's able to extend this properly. Doza tramples Kimo, who is trampling the rest of the competition, and hopefully is going to try to get that run back in Grand Finals. Great stuff from Doza. He thought Timo after that, you know, near perfect, he thought maybe he had, had the ability to make that comeback, but... It did not happen in there, you know. Good stuff to Timo. Gonna finish third place at this online dra uh, Dragon Radar event. Remember, this is on the East Coast side, so we got all the cats over there playing it. Who's gonna get in that Saga event? Who's gonna get that free flight to the Saga event of their choice? Try to play for that Dragon Ball. That is definitely the question here. It's gonna be between Super Hot Garbage versus Doza. I honestly think that Doza was able to make the adjustments necessary after his matches with Super Hot Garbage against Teemo because Teemo is a very similar player. While a lot of his stuff wasn't as creative as Super Hot Garbage, the pressure game and the consistency in applying that pressure was there. So Doza, congrats to you in adapting in that regard, going on the offense at the right times and taking those risks because it paid off. Now you, get, now you gotta put your money where your mouth is and do it against Super Hot Garbage in six matches. Yeah, six That's matches. Hard. I mean, one of the things that I always say about Dragon Ball Fighters is that one of the uh, one of the things that is uh, maybe unexpected from people who come from different games is the stamina that you need for this game. It's different than most other games. Most other games don't take this long, so you need an added uh, you need an added talent for yourself. Do you have the stamina to run through a top eight? Do you have the ability to go six games in grand finals? Versus the guy who puts you in there three straight. Not only puts you in there three straight. Styled on you. Puts you in a three straight and then threw a little bit of salt on you on top of that. <laughs> Kosher salt. He scraped you up and is like, let's just dip you in one little big salt bath. We got super hot garbage versus Doza. Super hot garbage reminder is on the winner side of this first three out of five. We'll get a second one if Doza is able to reset. It's all up to him. He finds the first hit with the Bardock. And immediately still, he's staying with the Bardock on point, not utilizing the Goku Blue, understanding that he needs the neutral ability against a player like Super Hot Garbage. Yeah, normally you wouldn't think this is the optimal way to play the team, right? Obviously, Bardock is just slightly better than Blue Goku's because of the way, how fast it is and, and the amount of hits done it deals, but he needs the neutral presence that Bardock offers. Super Hard Garbage able to find the hit. He's going to go into the level one. Yeah, he wants to get Ginyu out right now, and he whiffs the Milky Cannon. It didn't matter for the damage. He just wanted to get Ginyu out so he could start summoning <laughs> the boys. He just can go <laughs> right off the screen. He's like, get out of here. You're useless. And it actually was a big deal, right? Like, yeah. Super Garbage wasn't able to start his cycle. That, that block string that he's been able to do on other people wasn't able to be put on. That blue Goku assist snap or uh, snipe might be bigger than we think it is. Yeah, shutting down the, the lockdown from Goldo and stopping Ginyu from getting the ball rolling is, is how you beat Ginyu. The only way to beat Ginyu is you smother him. And that is exactly what Doza is doing right now. Not able to confirm the kill, but the... Just keeping the pressure on. I love the mix-ups here. He had to add a little bit of pizzazz. That's all he needed. Oh, put him in a sandwich. Cross-cut beams. Pisses it off. That is, that is a great little extra thing he needed to do. He needed to put on that little extra mix-up in order to find that last hit. And how important was it to get rid of that Ginyu? But now you got to deal with the other two. Double level one. Man, that does quite a bit of damage. Nice double jump. Gets away from the Dragon Rush. But now it's Doza's turn. Trying to go for the hard read. And Super, Super Hot Garbage is by no means out of this situation. His Vegeta is incredibly insane. But Doza, I mean, we... He's showing a much better improvement. It's definitely looking a lot better from Doza, but one of the things I was really impressed with Garbage is he had that one game where he actually didn't play with Ginyu at all. He's been shown to have good neutral, but does he have good defense? He's going to have to deal with the Revenger Assault mix-up. And he's 
able to block it. The empty jump low, and the DP gets called out, and the sparking as well. That's not safe. More than content to have that Super Saiyan Goku take the hit for him. He's able to build that level three. Gonna burn a lot of that sparking meter too. Definitely a big win for Doza here, trying to shut down this comeback potential. Nice blocks on the side of Super Hot Garbage, and oh, finally gets opened up. The cheeky stuff with the hair normal. Yeah, best thing about this combo is that it's a little bit longer than the traditional one, so burns through all of the sparking. That's it for Super Hot Garbage. Not able to beat, not able to punish the reflect. Probably looking for a whip DP. Not, did not get what he was looking for. And with the connection, I think Super Hot Garbage is getting a little bit flustered. Yeah, unfortunately he doesn't finish the combo in that situation. Big drop, but he finds the hit on the Goku. What's the decision here? He goes snap. for the snap. Double jump out of there, no reason not to. <laughs> oh, and the, the Kid Lewis hit the tag. It was still there, he just ran into oh, it. Oh, I had no clue what happened. The screen moved a second and everything no. stopped. Yeah, Kid Boo Assist was still active on the screen. So when, when Doza tagged in, he got scooped up by the gumball. Oh my god. Oh, that, we call that the subatomic sabers right there. <laughs> we call that the subatomic sabers. All right, we have to move him negative for our tag. He'll never guess. And he didn't. There you go. Super hot garbage. Just left with the Kid Boo here. And he goes for the Dragon Rush, finds the hit. I mean, although the 1v3 is a big deal, what's also a big deal is the time. <laughs> we have 100 seconds left. Yeah. We're done. Just wait. We're down to the double digits. It's going to be really hard for the amount of health that he needs to take from Doza. But that is one character down. This is the start. He's also really close to a level 3. Yeah. And one of the things, too, is if you do get down to the last the last seconds and you're able to kill a character, which is probably not going to happen here, um, you get a time extension, but not today, Super High Garbage. Dosa coming in strong after getting sent to losers by this man. Wants, wants to take him out with a vengeance. Yeah, that's been a, that's been a really good way for Dosa to be able to find that last hit, right? Yeah. The EX elbow into the... Uh, beam call and it's a good way to get a quick sandwich and also you don't expect what side is going to come from because you know uh, Goku just disappears for a second so tough to deal with on top of which you have the ability to you know put on a mix up afterwards but yeah. we haven't even seen that part just yet so Doza takes the first one we go back to the lobby I like that quite a bit you know garbage going to be able to take a breather uh, I wouldn't be too sad about that one he lost the Ginyu in pretty pretty fast so he wasn't able to play that game at all and then the rest of it was pretty good, honestly, from the Vegeta Kid Buu. Uh, Doza just played very well. He wasn't able to find uh, any sort of momentum with those two. And uh, I think, you know, between losing the Captain Ginyu and then losing the sparking in the way that he did, I, I think those were the two biggest reasons why he, he had very little comeback potential. Yeah. Low percentage comeback, I would yeah. say. He, it was still possible, however, he needed to play impeccably, and it looked like he was a little bit shaken, especially with his willingness to DP in that match and how he was getting punished. So I need, we need to see super hot garbage go back to form that he was on the side of losers, make Doza, punish Doza for the mistakes that he's making and not try to force so many situations. <laughs> Yeah, we see Super Hot Garbage now playing a little bit more passively here. No, never mind, I lied. Looks like he was trying to go for the hit before he finds the opening. I love that Vegeta call. Goes for the cross up, calls the Vegeta in order to take the pressure back. Oh my god, that is some kid boost up right there. Does he go for the level three up high? No. Goes for the mix up afterwards. <laughs> This oh, is help yeah. him out. That super dash getting him through the Vegeta assist. And Doza goes for the side switch. No, oh, the what? Yeah, because he's on the opposite side of the screen, he had to go to the full length of the super dash. That didn't give him as many uh, as much time to put on the mix-up afterwards, but Doza nonetheless finds the hit on the pink guy. That's going to be it. You're not flush. Why are you mashing buttons after that vanish? I know yeah. better, I know frame damage. You didn't even have three bars. One of the, one of the things that is kind of hard to recognize about this game sometimes is that distances from the edge of the screen matter. You do definitely have to think about that when you're pressing buttons sometimes. Level three from Bardock. It's gonna be a mid-screen mix-up. Gives him even more options. One of the things I like about Bardock's level three is 
other characters, you don't really have that potential. Wow. That's rough. You don't have the potential to get that mix mid screen. You normally have it in the corner. But Bardock, he thrives and pulls slots. MT low going to find the hit. And Doza is running away with it. This Bardock just being able to be a mix up monster for this team. And I think Super Hot Garbage needs to spark in this situation. Unless he's incredibly confident in his blocks, he can't lose this Vegeta. Wow. Nice block on the empty low. Oh my god. <laughs> He's waiting for his moment. He is waiting for his moment. What is it going to happen? <gasps> He's still blocking. It's not your turn no, yet. No, and even the kid is trying to come to help. It's not your turn. But he wasn't able to get the full combo. Super hard garbage able to get out the tech. Saves this character's life. Oh my god. He is just mashing EX Lariat trying to get in and... Vegeta gets out, 20 seconds of blocking, and he's not able to make it happen. Now, it's really all about Super Hard Garbage playing calm on this game. He needs to give this Vegeta time to recover some blue health. This is the most important thing right now, but finding the hit definitely helping out. Call out the boys, we have the Purple Comet, and we also have a Dragon Rush. How critical was Super Hot Garbage in this situation? Not getting hit by Doza, not getting that Vegeta snapped and losing the blue life. He's recovered so much oh. health for that reason and actually finds the kill on the blue Goku. Honestly, I think like he succeeded there because he was trying to meaty the wake up, but he, he missed, which caused the reflect away. And then Vegeta's like, no, I got you. Your mistake, my reward, and that hard tag was needed. If he got a grab there, that was going to be lights out for Gin. Yeah, baited the reflect, but we didn't get to see the punish from Doza. This man is crazy. Oh, oh my god! Little foot! Put yeah. him to the sky. Good recognition that that lariat was right above his head. Let's get that 2 H for the punish. We're left with just the Super Saiyan what? Go. What? All right, you. I told you, this man is crazy. I feel like he might have been reading a, a an overhead. Yeah, probably. The EX Rush Punch. Most likely. But that was that. Why not just 2 8? Uh, what? Just Doza continuing on here doesn't have the sparking. Super Hard Garbage still has his. It's definitely the big no. question here. Ginyu boys. Oh, oh, just gets opened up by the Instant Dash H and then he resets the combo. Oh. One more time, do he reset it there again he with resets. the ads? Which means that, that this is going to be super close to kill. And that's actually great regulation that he reset on that second hit because he's able to pop the sparking, get that extra damage. I don't know what happened here on that second. I don't know what happened on that Ooh. second one. He staggered the combo because he thought that he was going to just eat a combo and be like, all right, I'm going to eat one more mix-up. And he just stopped blocking. He was on autopilot in defense. And then the 2M just comes in, and it went straight back to one hit for the counter. That was great awareness from Super Hot He brought that back. He lost his first character immediately. Doza looked like he was in control, and Super Hot Garbage with the cheeky stuff, the pizzazz. That was uh, that was something else. That was uh, tactics of old, I would say. Just That's going so for resets when you're unable to kill instead of going for the full hit. I mean, and it's not a bad idea in this game specifically. We, we focus so much about knockdowns and stuff like that, but this game, the first few hits of your combo do yeah. so much damage. And that's why it was so important that he got that reset there, especially getting a, he got a better starter. He's like, no, 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 I don't like that M in the air. I'm gonna, I'm gonna restart this with 2M. <laughs> and it yeah, just Yeah, it gets a 2M, goes into sparking, and able to get enough meter to finish it off. It's Definitely so dirty. great sequence from a super hot garbage. At the last second, and Doza goes back to the lobby, just takes a breather. I don't blame him. We probably see quite a bit of that in this Grand Finals. Remember I was talking about, this is as much a test of skill as it is of stamina. Oh, you can't be throwing those out in the neutral, especially with them trying to sniff them out too. These lariats are incredibly unsafe, and once you've seen it enough, uh, it's a lot easier to punish. And I think as, as the game progresses, we're having sort of a Virgil kind of issue with Bardock because if you're not one of the best Bardocks in the game, there are so many Bardocks out there that everybody's going to know the answer for it. There's just so much exposure that he starts getting a little less good. I still think he's the best character in the game, but it does happen. Some people say that's the natural balance of fighting games. <laughs> Hundred two eight in the corner. This kid boot is bleeding quite a bit, but Super Garbage content on just letting him rock for a little bit. Not before having the Vegeta take the damage. Now he gets snapped. All that blue health left. 
got to think that he's trying to find a way to get this guy out of here. I think at this, nope. At this point, he's just going to lose the character. I, in that situation, I would want to tag him out, but then also try to use that as a situation to beat something on my opponent, because they think that I'm going to go for some kind of tag or anything. And if I'm aggressive, when they think I'm going to run, it works out. But losing the character does not get that opportunity. Nice reflect. Super Hot Garbage wanted to continue that block string with a Vanish, but oh. it didn't work out. Calls of a Zeta Assist to convert off to 6M. And this is exactly how the comeback started the other time as well. We had Ginyu out, and Ginyu was able to make the magic happen. And this is going to be so much damage on Doza. Not going to be able to kill, pump it three times once Ginyu out. Yeah, it just gets the knockdown. Nice reflect on the Oki as well. And he's able to Ooh. attack the Bardock in there. <laughs> Big win, but nope. Let me nice. see that Blue Goku finds the hit as well. And he saw Sparky here in... Ginyu, like, it's not all about Kid Buu. Ginyu still has all the power in the world to make these things happen, and you gotta stay on top of him. And nice wow. mash punch. That was, that was bold. Oh, Bardock getting beat up oh. a little bit. The mash out level three beats the super dash. Not a bad idea from Doza. He's gonna get the knockdown here. Sometimes you gotta do the monster mash. We're getting close to the Halloween, and nice punish on the drag. There you go. Recognize he wasn't a plus frames in that situation, <laughs> so goes for the tag. You see Doza also backing up as well. Oh, no conversion no. out of the air. Unfortunate. That was a critical point here, especially with both these guys having sparking. Now Super Hard Garbage really close to that level three. This is definitely a critical moment in this oh, set. Let's go him out, but no, not able to confirm. And that sparking is huge on the side of Doza. Oh my god, this the double so key blast mix up. This stuff is just real difficult to deal with. He actually punches Doza before he was able to get the hit. Garbage not believing in it. That's a big loss for him. He's no, able he to take a lot three. of damage. No level three. I think he wanted to go for a cheeky reset there, and it did not pay off. You cannot reflect that. Give me the hell. Yeah. Wants to get rid of again, you nice tech. Still got that sparking on the side of Super Hard Garbage. You gotta reflect there. Oh, finds the two or the two H finds the anti air. Come on, double green. I expect that. The scaling is gonna be really good on this too, so it may just kill. Yep. There was only yeah. one. There was two hits. And the second benefit is that he's able to tag the Vegeta in there, who has much more health. And if he wants to spend the Sparky on the 2v1, it's going to be better spent on a character with more health than less. Yeah. So I definitely like this situation that Hot Garbage is in right now, Doza. Level However, three. this is not an unfamiliar situation for him. And he has to be mindful of the meaty setups that Doza could have at his disposal here. Because if he just sparks right there, he would have gotten open up and lost Vegeta. So great stuff from him and not able to confirm. Oh, the 2 h Attack him out. No. Yeah, wasn't able to tag yeah. him out. Another anti-air 2H. This is how we saw Doza make the comeback before. Just consistent anti-airs playing solid. That's not plus, and he got Dragon Rush. Thought he was going to mash because he knew he was in a plus situation. And now you got to eat this. He's going to switch sides. Get him to the corner. I think level three. Level three. Yep. Yeah, I would spend the level three as well. Gets the knockdown. And it's going to give him good damage as well. well Scary man. situation to be in for Doza. Nice banish on the side of those right there. And oh, the beam is called out. Plus frames just tries to bait the DP on that one. It doesn't oh, work out. Oh no, Ginyu finds the hit. He has the vanish. No, he misses the combo. And he's going to get the Ginyu Force in, even though there's no assist on deck. And he's just going to charge. Oh my. What a crazy person. Oh, he gives, he gives Vegeta a bar to work with. El Clasico, the match. Goku versus Vegeta. The next hit is going to decide this. And, the, and that's it. He's got two bars. He's not even going to need to use it. Sub a minute. Super hard garbage. Able to find the last one. Goes up 2-1 to one in this grand final set. Got to hit him with a big brain attack sometimes. You call the purple comet. You start charging. He was reflecting. He could have super dashed. And at that point, he was ready for the 2-H. So he just kind of had to stand there. That was Ugh. unexpected. I will say that. That was rough. It's not, I, I mean, I, I, some part of me also kind of disagrees with it because it was like, like he, you saw him down back there. You could have just ran up, taken some space, maybe some corner positioning. Punch. Uh, but, I mean, I think what the thing I like the most out of that is that that's the super hard garbage I saw in winner's finals. Yeah, that, that's, that was, that's that was the, him. That's the flexing garbage. 
from before, right? I'll charge on you. Come on, do something, man. I, I don't care. I kill my Ginyu. I don't need him. I don't need him. I don't need real combos. And, and so when I see that, I'm like, all right, you know what? That's the confidence. That's the confidence that looks really good to take this as he sits two to one in this grand final set on the winner side. Doza is going to need two only to reset it. And then three more after that. It's going to have to come up with an answer right now. And this is going to be do or die right now. It is two one up for hot. I couldn't even remember. I'm losing my voice right now. Super hot garbage. I was just gonna call him hot garbage. I'm like, no, no, no. This guy's ultra instinct hot garbage. <laughs> ultra hot garbage, and then Omega hot gar garbage when he gets to GT. Oh, uh, Omega Shenron for Dragon Ball Season Two. Let's go. <laughs> oh baby, I want it. Oh, we might be asking for too much there. We're gonna let the intros rock here. I like. Give me as much time as possible. Seriously. Sticking with the bar dog on point. And these neutral monsters start off the game for us here. One more for Garbage. Oh, the bait with the reflect. That's well. And super hot Garbage. Getting off to a great start here. Doza. He's got to wake up a little bit. You can't be reflecting so carelessly. And you got to be able to block the mix. Great blocks. And the overhead makes it happen. I love him. You what? He extended off of that overhead? I am. Uh, what? Is, we are all shocked. What just happened? I was like, why'd he do a no wait? <laughs> that is uh, sparking. I don't blame Doza for the sparking. He needs to stop the momentum any way possible. Oh man, great reflect on Malaria, but nothing afterwards. <laughs> Goku Blue Assist actually kicked him off of that Vanash. I like it. That overhead combo, what the hell was that? That, that was unbelievable. I thought he got it. I thought he got it by mistake. I thought he was like, oh, he's just yeah, in, okay. like in a mood right now. This is good. I just I meant to do that. Intentional. So I mean, oh man, I was gonna say garbage still in a good spot because he has the sparking, but not anymore. This this uh this is Kim Bruce getting beat up quite a bit. One and two get the job done. Yeah, gonna have to spend two bars one no way or another. So why don't we leave the Bardock on point now, Ginyu? I feel like we've seen this before though. We've definitely seen this before. I mean, you know, it's you, happening. you might think this is a deficit for garbage, but this is still a 6v3. It's happening. It's still looking pretty good. Sammy, it's happening. Oh my god. Some of the game use. Oh, just oh, wake up level one and you ooh, can't do it. You reflected it. Then he goes for the DHC. It doesn't work out. He was just walking forward or something. I don't know what just happened, but we do have the blue Goku on there. Nice conversion with the Vegeta assist, and this is the same old story we saw before. Garbage with the Ginyu. Not even attack. Man. Oh! Oh my god, he didn't have enough reflex for him. That's one of the hardest things about reflecting in the corner, is that it doesn't push you far away, so you basically can just keep mashing buttons. Calling all the boys. How right are now. these guys making decisions at this fast pace of a game? Nice dragon rush tech. And even though the game is going incredibly fast, Hot Garbage is able to keep himself composed. He's ready with chaos. Oh man, at least one of us is because this is definitely got oh, it everywhere. The, the combo! combo! The combo off the eraser gun! The oh, you! Flipped on a dime. What went from a 2v3 went to a 2v2. Oh, Chase, he's gonna get him out of the combo! Chase, the homie! Oh my god. The combo breaker, he still has the sparking. I'd actually think Killer about Instinct. popping the sparking because of the amount of blue life he has. Yeah, we are playing Killer Instinct now. <laughs> we got combo breakers. Oh no, he actually goes for the unsafe tag. He's gonna snap in, he's gonna lose that blue life on Ginyu. I'm surprised to see the Bardock still there, honestly. And that's why he's Master one plan. hit away Master from plan. losing that health. But he's a genius. He's tried and true. What? Oh, he tagged him out and he got the hit! Oh my god, that's it! That that's 40% gone! And that's no more Sparky! He's not recovering any of this life back! This man is insane! Whoa, no, the oh, that's gonna be it! Super hot garbage! The madman! And he sparks anyways. Sparks anyways, drops the elbow on him. Super hot garbage is gonna be your Dragon Radar Online East Coast champion. And please, really quick, Mr. Jake Ryan, tell me what that means. That means he's gonna be able to go to any Saga event he wants and pull that kind of salt throwing at people because 
Holy cow, that was an amazing set from Super Hard Garbage. It doesn't look like he had it, the adjustments in the bag after the first match and Super Hard Garbage was like, give him one to get the hopes up and then bring out all the stops. It Cause... makes me, it, it blows my mind that Ginyu players have the ability to make decisions when there's that many people on the screen. That was crazy. It's crazy. That was it's insane. crazy. You have, it is, a, he created constant scrambles, constant crazy situations. And when you're the Ginyu player, you've obviously put yourself in that situation so many more times. You're able to make more rational, better decisions. Yeah. And you saw that from Super Hot Garbage that he's able to take six off Doza and he is going to be your East Coast Online Dragon Radar champion. Congratulations to him. I'm looking forward to seeing that Ginyu at a Saga event soon. But until then, we are all done here. Thank you guys for tuning in to this. This has been a blast. I was able to see so many new, interesting styles on top of which I was able to see some uh, underrepresented characters as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty happy here. Yeah, I'm incredibly happy about that. I had initially thought Doza was going to take the whole thing, but Super Hot Garbage came in and mixed this all up. I was not ready for any of that. And, you know, I'm a believer in Ginyu. We have an American Ginyu. And Aqua, you know, you got your money cut out for you because that was some crazy stuff, but... Definitely, definitely. So first place winner, Super Hot Garbage. Second place is going to be Doza. Third place, Timo. Thank you guys for everything.